Next on NFL Live. It's always Barry Sanders is the best running back, and Thomas Thomas is the best all-around back, and I don't know the difference between those two. Who is the best running back in pro football, Thurman Thomas or Barry Sanders? Another great one, O.J. Simpson, to give us his opinion. Who's the best team in pro football, the Washington Redskins, or let's talk more about it. There's no revenge factor as far as I'm concerned. The only thing I'm concerned about is us winning the game Sunday. Art Shell says revenge is not a factor in the rematch between the Bills and the Raiders. We'll talk about it next on NFL Live. The Astrodome in Houston, where the division-leading Oilers are still in search of their first ever AFC Central title. Two weeks ago in Pittsburgh, they had a chance to wrap it up, but didn't get it done. Today, they try again against an old nemesis. Hello, everyone. Bob Costas, along with Will McDonough and Bill Parcells. OJ joins us shortly from Los Angeles, site of today's showdown between the Bills and the Raiders. Now, three weeks remain in the regular season, with division titles so far claimed by Washington and Buffalo. A team that thought it would already be in that category is the Houston Oilers, who meet the Steelers today in the Astrodome. For a report, out to Houston, Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen. Charlie? And Bob, as you know, whenever the uh, Steelers and the Oilers get together, it's a renewal of an old, old, tough rivalry. Well, you know, in the late 70s, Charlie, argu arguably the two best teams in professional football were the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Houston Oilers. And every time the Houston Oilers seemed to come up short, and so Bum Phillips had this quote. He said, last year we knocked on the door, this year we beat on the door, next year we're going to kick it in. But unfortunately for the Houston Oilers, they're never quite able to get over the hump. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about that next they were going to kick it in. Don't let that go by. Well, that, that, what ended up happening here is that 10 years later, here they are in the Astrodome with a chance for a Super Bowl to get there, but instead Pittsburgh screwed it up for them by defeating them with a 50-yard field goal there by Gary Anderson. So all the time during this tenure, they've been bridesmaids, but never brides. Yes, but what uh, Todd didn't say is when they were going to kick it in is that the Raiders ended up kicking it in that year. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Last Monday night here at the, uh, the Astrodome, the House of Pain, it was a House of Pain for wide receiver Ernest Gibbons. Well, the one delivering the plane here is Wes Hopkins, and he paid $7,500 for this elbow to Ernest Gibbons' Ooh. nose that ended up breaking. And as a result of that, you can see there, he is going to be wearing the very stylish shades to protect not only his nose, but his eyes from the glare. And the stylish shades, this is what they look like. You like that? He looks pretty good. And so do you. Thank you. Okay, Bob. All right, gentlemen, we'll check back with you later. Continuing to zip around the league. Next up, the Broncos versus the Browns in Cleveland. The Browns are 6-7 and seven, with an outside chance at a wild card if they win their final three. Denver is tied with the Raiders atop the AFC West, but they know that the Raiders have a tough one at home later today against the Bills. For more on Denver and Cleveland, Joel Myers, Dan Hampton in Cleveland. Joel? Bob, almost hard to believe we are in Cleveland because it's so warm. Game time temperature right now at 57 degrees. And in fact, when I came to the stadium this morning, I found my partner, Dan Hampton. He's not used to this warm weather, playing all those years in Chicago. He was in the lake taking a dip, so he is ready to go. The big story coming in, though, quarterback John Elway, the tendonitis, he and his throwing shoulder, told us, Dan, the warm-up period, still a very difficult process. Well, it is. The first 20 minutes for John Elway, warming up is 20 minutes from hell. But he says, once I get through that 20 minutes, I can throw the ball pretty well. I can do anything I need to, except when I have to get outside of the pocket. Now, when I throw off the run, I'm having a little bit more difficulty. But today, he will be calling his own plays, and he won't call any plays that he doesn't have confidence in. And if there's to be a psychological advantage possibly for one of the two teams it could go to the Cleveland Browns as last night at their team meeting they were addressed by all-time rushing great Jim Brown so a classic confrontation once again Cleveland and Denver not this time for the AFC championship but a very big game for both Bob all right Joel Dan thank you remember even though Denver is tied for first place with the Raiders the Raiders beat them twice head-to-head -head. LA has the tiebreaker now Kansas City is a game back in the AFC West a win today would leave them in very good shape at least for a wild card they host the Chargers this afternoon at Arrowhead and for more on that we bring in Tom Hammond and Joe Namath 
Bob, like uh, Cleveland, it's an absolutely balmy day in Kansas City, expecting temperatures in the 60s here today. The thing's not quite so sunny for the Chiefs, who need the win, as you pointed out. Their leading ground gainer, Christian Okoye, out with an injury, gaining 999 yards on the season. And, Joe, I guess the absence of big Christian Okoye means more pressure on Steve DeBerg, who's been battling a slump. Well, sure. DeBerg, the 15-year veteran, had a slump. He played well last week up at Seattle. I find it interesting, though, that DeBerg, a 15-year veteran, Veterans going back to basics, getting his footwork down, Pat. I expect him to play well as as uh, well as Barry Word can run that football. Yeah, Barry Word will start for Okoye today and a significant defensive injury for the Chiefs. All-pro quarterback Albert Lewis also out. Bob? Okay, now the best matchup of the day is in Los Angeles where the Bills and Raiders meet in a late game on NBC. In their last meeting, Buffalo won the AFC Championship by stomping the Raiders this past January 51-3. to A win today by the Silver and Black would clinch a Raider playoff spot. For more, we go to the Bills Hotel in Los Angeles where O.J. Simpson is standing by. Juice. Well, Bob, I had a chance to spend some time with most of the Bills uh, players uh, uh, just a few minutes ago, and they say that this Raider team is a much improved team than the one they played in the championship last year, and they just don't want to show up like they did uh, against Kansas City earlier this year when they, got, they came in flat, and they say that uh, Kansas City jumped on them quite a bit. One note of concern for the uh, uh, Bills is Bruce Smith. Now, last week he got poked in his left eye, and he had a bad eye, so all week he played with a patch on his eye, and today is the first day he's going to go with that patch off his eye. He also mentioned that the long plane ride here yesterday, his knee stiffened up, so it wasn't feeling that well. He said he'll go as long as he can, and depending on how the game is going, that will determine how he's going to play. The big question is how the Raiders are going to defense the Bills. As you know, last year, they went with their basic 4-3 defense. It didn't work. The Bills scored 50-something points against them. Uh, the key to the to the Raiders defending the Bills is going to be their linebackers. You got to take a look at Ellison, Moss, and Winston and how they're going to handle uh, Thurman Thomas. Now, it's been raining all day here in Buffalo. I'm mean, here in uh, L.A., all night rather, in L.A. The field is wet. It's a natural field. That normally will not affect speed, but it will affect quickness. And Thurman Thomas relies on quickness. So early in the game, I think you should pay a lot of attention to the linebackers of the Raiders, how they handle Thurman Thomas. If they can't handle them, they can't win. Okay, O.J., now, of course, if Bruce Smith played for the Buccaneers, he would probably leave that patch on his eye. On another subject, recently released hostage Terry Anderson remains at the American military base in Wiesbaden, Germany today, and will likely depart for America in the next few days. Football certainly isn't at the top of Terry Anderson's thoughts today, but his hometown team is a small part of what he's now coming home to. This was the scene in Wiesbaden on Friday as Anderson became a free man for the first time in six and a half years. Clad in a Buffalo Bills sweatshirt, he took time to reflect on home in western New York. Can you look out at those cameras and say something to the people of western New York? Yes, yes. I would be there now if it weren't wintertime and so darn cold, I think. <laughs> I love western New York and I, I intend to go back. Uh, but I'm not quite ready to face the winter yet. Home for Anderson is Batavia, New York, a small town outside Buffalo. Right now, Anderson might be the most surprised Bills fan of all. You see, when he was taken hostage in March of 85, the Bills were in between seasons that each produced miserable 2-14 and 14 records. Terry would hardly recognize today's dominating Bills, but the Bills have recognized Anderson by extending him an open invitation to Rich Stadium and a trade-in on that sweatshirt for an official team jersey. He's, uh... It's nice enough to wear one of those. I think we deserve not only a game jersey, maybe a couple tickets to a playoff game. How's that sound? Now, the people at Armed Forces Television have arranged for the Bills game with the Raiders to be available should Terry Anderson want to watch it today in Wiesbaden. Up next, O.J. rejoins us to address the question a lot of people around the NFL are asking. Just who is the best running back in football, Sanders or Thomas? NFL Live is brought to you by Subaru. It's what to drive. By Canoe, the men's cologne by Dana. And by Radio Shack, America's technology store. Nobody compares. Thomas breaking tackle. He has a touchdown. Taylor draw to Barry, cuts it back to the right. He's to the 15. Barry to the 10. Breaks it, tackle five, and he will pick it in. Touchdown, Lions. There's something, both of them. Of course, there are other good running backs in the NFL, particularly Emmett Smith, who's emerging in Dallas. But by consensus, Sanders and Thomas are the top two. The question now for O.J., who joins us from the Bills Hotel in Los Angeles, who juice 
is the best? Good question, Bob. And uh, when you talk about players of this caliber, it obviously brings up a lot of debate. You know what I said to myself this week? Instead of debating it, let me get on the plane. Let me go and talk to the individuals involved. It is almost a feeling that you can do anything and that uh, there's no way they can stop you. I'm not the fastest guy in the world, you know, I'm not the strongest guy in the world, but I get the job done. Where do you rate yourself uh, among the top backs in the league? Well, I think definitely I'm in the top two. Uh, I don't think people really want to label me as the best running back in the National Football League because I, I do so much and Barry does so little for Detroit. The only thing that he really does is just run the football. And where I, I catch, you know, I block, I run, I do, you know, I do everything that I can to help Buffalo Bills win. My, my team asked me basically to run the ball, you know, and uh, pass, uh, catch passes every now and then. But uh, they know I'm a runner. That's what I do best. When it comes to pure running ability, the electrifying moves, few would argue that Sanders is the best. But check out the numbers. Thomas leads the league in rushing. Sanders is second. Add the receiving yards, and you can see why Thomas is called the best overall back in football. What about this thing about being an all-around back? It's, you know, it's flattering, but it, but it's kind of have a little <laughs> negative connotations at times. I think so. Uh, you know, every time you pick up a magazine or a newspaper, it's always Barry Sanders is the best running back and Thurman Thomas is the best all-around back, and I don't know the difference between those two. If you played in Buffalo in that offensive scheme, do you think that you could be as effective as Thurman? Mm, well, I don't know if I could be as effective, but um, I, I could be effective doing it. I mean, Thurman, he's a... A very good uh, pass receiver, and he's had a lot of practice doing it, um, and I haven't, you know, so I don't know if I'll be as effective, but uh, I think I can get the job done. Thomas and Sanders are used to the comparisons. They've known each other a long time. Imagine this. They played for the same college team. When Sanders was a sophomore at Oklahoma State University, Thomas was a senior All-American. There was never really any, um, <clears throat> any race or any competition that, uh, as far as who was going to had the job, I mean, Thurman was a man. You know, but a couple of times he had gotten hurt, and I went and did a good job. Good enough to win the Heisman Trophy as a junior. All right, last year, last game of the season, you had a chance to win the rushing title against Washington, but you left the game early, and Barry won the rushing title, beat you by seven yards. This year, the last game is against the Lions. You got a chance to win the rushing title. Are you coming out of the game? <laughs> <laughs> I've already talked to my offensive line about that. Uh, you know, there, there's no way in the, in the world they're going to let me come out of the game this year. And uh, if it comes down to me and Barry coming to the final game of the rushing title, you know, my offensive lineman told me they're going to keep me there the whole four quarters. Now, I understand this. When you talk about Barry Sanders, as far as pure running the football, I think you got to put him with Gil Sears, Jim Brown. I like to think of yours truly as one of the best of all time. But let me put it this way. If I was drafting a team and I had a team that had some weapons, say like the Jets with good wide receivers, undoubtedly I would take uh, Thurman Thomas because his ability to do so many things will enhance everybody else and he would improve your offense. But if I was starting from scratch and I had nothing, I'd go with Barry Sanders because he doesn't need a lot of great football players around. Him. As long as they're hustling on offense, he's going to give you an offense, therefore giving you the time to, to draft and build up your defense and the other elements of your team. Bill, you're a coach. Which one would you take? Well, I think you've got to evaluate them perfectly, O.J. I think uh, they're both great backs, but the big thing here, we're talking about greatness over a period of time. I think longevity and durability are what are going to determine that. And in that case, I think I'd have to take Barry Sanders. I think he's built to last, just like one of those Delco batteries. Yeah, but you got to admit, Barry being a runner, and you like that conservative, normally dump truck kind of runner, but you like that conservative offense. I would say the other Bill that we have, Bill Walsh, would probably look towards Thurman Thomas because of the type of offense as he runs. Well, I think you've got to keep your backs on the field now. I want those backs that can stay on the field. Don't come <laughs> off every two plays like you used to, O.J. Hey, Whoa. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> you have twisted the man around and left him momentarily flabbergasted. So, on that point, yeah, actually, you hurt his knee. You, you realize the man has sustained a knee injury in the lobby of a hotel. What a pathetic state of affairs. The late game of our doubleheader gives you a chance to see either Thurman Thomas, whose Bills visit the Raiders, or Barry Sanders, whose Lions host the Jets. And we're back with Will McDonough, who is, so far as I know, in perfect health, right after this. Well, we continue on with our merry crew. It seems to be the consensus that the Redskins are the best team 
in the NFL, with maybe the Buffalo Bills just behind, but at least a few people would reverse that order, huh? Yeah, Bob, I think you'd have to say Washington probably still is the best, but with Bruce Smith back and the way he played last Sunday against the Jets, some of the coaches I talked to this week and people around the league say, watch Buffalo. They could be the team in the rise because their defense is now starting to play very well. I think the first six or seven games of the year, they averaged about 24 points they were giving up. Now it's down to 17. It could go lower with this guy. What do you I, think? I, th I think Buffalo's defense is playing much better right now, but I still think there's some inherent weaknesses in that defense, and they could show up against the right team. I think the safety position, things like that, could show up. Yeah, I talked to their general manager, Bill Paulian, this week. He says this is the best defense they are playing in the last three years. You see, their three linebackers have been great. Bruce Smith is great, and Al Davis is the one who told me, he said, well, right now, I think these guys are as good as anybody in football, and, of course, the Raiders are playing them today. The weakness is against the run, right? The way you guys were able to beat them in the Super Bowl, even though the game was very close, and the way Kansas City clobbered them in that Monday night game. Well, if they do have a weakness, it's because they're not a big physical defense. I think if you try to run laterally against them, they have enough speed with Bennett and Talley and Conlon and guys like that to chase you down. But if you go right at them, I think they still have to be tested to, to, to prove that they're real solid against that phase. Now, the Eagles are real solid against almost everything. I mean, what do you do against that defense? Well, Bob, I think a lot of people feel right now that they're, they're one of the best defenses that ever played this game. During the week, I called Buddy Ryan, who coached the Purple People Eaters in Minnesota back in the late 60s and in the 70s. And he had Chicago in 84 and 85 when they were great. And he started these guys. And he said, well, these guys right now are as good as Chicago was in 84 and 85. And I think Chicago was the best. So he says, right now, he even rates them higher than the Steel Curtain. That's how great he thinks, particularly the front four. And I know you like their front four. Well, I like their front seven. I think they've got seven guys up there. It's very difficult to block any one of those seven. But on the back side, I think there's a, there may be just a little weakness there in the Eagles secondary also. Well, let me ask you how you feel about this. I talked to Fritz Shermer this week, the defensive coordinator of the Cardinals, and he said he thinks this Eagles team, 11 men, is the best tackling defense he's ever seen. Excellent tacklers with a lot of speed. They get a lot of people to the ball. The coverage aspect is where they might have a little weakness. Okay. But how about the comparison to the Bears? You told me earlier this year, and you've always said it, that that Bears team that crushed you guys in the playoffs in 85 on their way to the Super Bowl was the best you faced. They were the best that I faced. The Eagles are very close to that, and their front four, I think, may be superior to the Bears. Okay, well, here's the way Buddy compared them when I asked him. Now, he coached both of them, right? He said the Eagles have the better front four. Chicago had the better linebackers, but he feels the Eagles have the edge with the defensive back. So two out of the three groups on defense, he gives it to this Eagles team. Okay, let's move on to another topic. Last week, the Falcons were about to have their playoff hopes take a dip. They were trailing at home to Green Bay. Chris Miller had sat out the first half with a very high fever. They got him on the training table. He comes in, and he's part of their rally in the second half, and they pull the game out in the last second. That's right, Bob. And it's interesting. I was talking to Jerry Glanville Friday, and he said, Will, they took him in on the table. They gave him a couple of bags of IVs, and they gave him some other shots, he said. And he'd come out, and he played a great game. He got us off the hook. But I didn't give him the game ball. You know who I gave the game ball to? And I says, who? He says, I gave it for the team doctor, Charles Harris, for getting him out there to play. A typical Glanville move. <laughs> Up next, the hottest man in the NFL. That would be the streaking Will McDonough, winner of four straight, as we bring you the upset special selections. Specials, an update on a couple of key players in the Eagles-Giants game today at the Meadowlands. Jim McMahon, despite the bad right elbow that caused him to miss the second half of last Monday night's game, will start for Philadelphia today. Lawrence Taylor, who missed last Sunday's game with a sprained ligament in his left knee, will bounce back more quickly than most would have, and he'll start today for the Giants. Now, on to the scoreboard for the upset specials to this late point in the season, and I maintain a slim lead. Will, with four consecutive correct upset selections, moves into a second-place tie with O.J., and Bill still within striking distance. Out to Los Angeles, where O.J. is at the Bills Hotel. Very quickly, your choice. Well, I'm still impressed with that Philly defense, so I'm going with Philly over the Giants. All right. Jets over Detroit. Jets over Detroit. Lions haven't lost a home game all year. Tampa Bay to win at home tonight against Minnesota. Now, I was going to take the Eagles over the Giants. Uh, you know, the way the Eagles are playing, for them to be a three-point underdog, that looks like a good selection. But it's gutless to duplicate O.J.'s choice. So he's left me with no choice but to take the Phoenix Cardinals, a two-touchdown underdog at home against the Redskins. Why do I do the things I do? <laughs> 
This is the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Nobody knows like Domino's how you like pizza at home. Okay, with Will McDonough and Bill Parcells, Bob Costas in New York. Welcome to those of you watching Cleveland and Denver. And those of you who just saw Gary Anderson, who sometimes is about all the offense the Steelers can claim, drill a 54-yarder to make that score 10-3 to at halftime. The Oilers leading the Steelers. Now, the Oilers, of course, with the victory, would finally wrap up their first ever outright AFC Central Championship. Jack Pardee's team has been struggling, and they go on the road to Cleveland and then to the Giants to conclude the season, so they want to get it done at home today. Alan Pinkett's fumble at the Pittsburgh 7 thwarted an early drive for Houston, but here he scores from the 7 and gives them a 7-0 lead. There have been a couple of costly turnovers for Pittsburgh, and then in general, their offense has run like this, as rookie Leroy Thompson stumbles down, gets back up, but it was hardly worth the effort as he stopped for a seven-yard loss. Houston by seven, 10-3. to three. Willie? Well, if I were a Houston Oilers fan, I'd be concerned once again about the turnovers. They're the worst in the AFC, giving up uh, 37 turnovers on offense already this year, and concerned about the way their offense is playing in general. They uh, only scored 14 points three weeks ago in Pittsburgh, and then they had a tough night against Philadelphia last Monday night, and they're struggling against Pittsburgh again today. Well, the Eagles, who had been playing especially well and, of course, registered that Monday night victory over Houston, are having their troubles at the Meadowlands against the Giants. 14-3 in favor of New York. More bad news for Philadelphia. Jim McMahon, who has spent most of his career, it seems, as a tackling dummy for all of his excellence, he has just been battered about as much as any quarterback of his generation. Today he was hit by nose tackle Lorenzo Freeman of the Giants. He goes out with a bruised chest. The much-traveled Jeff Kemp has replaced him at quarterback, and it is doubtful that McMahon will return today. Phil Sims has thrown two touchdown passes, both to Dave Meggett, an 8-yarder and a 14-yarder. Now Sims, in seven quarters, as the Giant quarterback, has thrown six touchdown passes. Jeff Hostetler, the man he replaced, threw five in 11 games before he was hurt. Bill? The Giants look a lot, a lot more alert this week. Their defense is playing very aggressively. And until late in the half, they didn't make any mistakes offensively. They did turn the ball over a little bit late as they wound down the second quarter a couple of times. But the Giants look like they're ready to go today. And Philadelphia looks like that they're not, they don't have that edge. You know, coming off that Monday night, sometimes it's tough to get it back by next Sunday. And it doesn't look they're, like they're quite as sharp defensively as they were last Monday night. Okay, straight to highlights of the game. Some of you folks are watching the Broncos and the Browns in Cleveland. Of course, they played those three AFC championship games, and that man, John Elway, kept the Browns out of three Super Bowls. Here he is in the first quarter, being intercepted by Cedric Figaro, who returns it to the Denver 37-yard line, and that sets up the game's first score. It comes four plays later, as Kevin Mack will run it over from three yards out, and it's 7-0 Cleveland. You see, barely gets across. And then into the second quarter from the spread formation, Elway, well protected, steps up into the pocket, zings this one to Michael Young, who makes the fine outstretched catch for the touchdown. And this one is tied at seven apiece. Moving along, San Diego at Arrowhead against the Chiefs. They've gone to halftime with a 14-0 San Diego lead. Marty Schottenheimer has to get the victory here. He concludes the year at San Francisco and at the Raiders. So this would be a very costly defeat if they don't get it. That's Rod Bernstein on a fourth and one, sustaining a long first half drive by getting two yards and keeping it alive. The first quarter drive bled over into the second, and this is how it ends with Nate Lewis catching the six-yard touchdown pass from John Fries. They kept the ball for 12 minutes and 18 plays to go 80 yards for a 7-0 lead. And then Donald Frank, a second-year free agent signee out of Winston-Salem State, steps in front of the intended receiver, picks off Steve DeBerg, returns at 71 yards for a touchdown. Late in the first half, DeBerg was again intercepted in San Diego territory. Now, in the two games which they lost before they righted themselves with a victory against Seattle last week, they turned the ball over nine times. Two costly turnovers again this week by DeBerg on the interceptions. I don't think there's any question. Kansas City's uh, season's on the line right here. They finish up with the Raiders in San Francisco. They don't win this one. They, they might have trouble even getting in the playoffs. So they've had problems every year with San Diego. Even this year when they beat them in San Diego, it was a three-point game. They always have problems with the Chargers running game. 
Here's another team in potential trouble. New Orleans, after the great start, has lost three in a row, and they're trailing at Dallas 10 to 7. This one at halftime, if they should lose and Atlanta wins tonight, first place tie in the NFC West when it looked like it belonged to the Saints. Chicago has a 21 10 lead at halftime at Soldier Field over the Packers. Brad Mustard, two touchdown runs. Jim Harbaugh, a 20 yard touchdown pass to Wendell Davis. And Indianapolis leads at New England 14 to 3. If the Colts win it, they might blow the number one draft choice. <laughs> We're back with a halftime preview of the late game most of you will see later on today on NBC, the Bills and the Raiders. Any NFL Live Halftime Report, brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Nobody knows like Domino's how you like pizza at home. And welcome back to our NFL Live studios in New York. Coming up, the second game of our NBC doubleheader, and most of you will see a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game between the Bills and the Raiders. A game won by Buffalo, 51-3. to Bill Parcells gives us a look at some of today's keys. The strength of the Raiders' secondary is in their corners, Lionel Washington and Terry McDaniel, who do a good job of man-to-man -man coverage, which will cause some problems for the Bills. Look for the Bills to use McKellar and Thomas to match up against the Raiders' interior defense. Every once in a while, Buffalo will deploy Thurman Thomas, as you see located here, in a wide receiver position, which is forces the Miami safety, Lewis Oliver, to play a one-on-one -on -one defense with him. You see Thomas comes down, fakes the move to the inside, and then beats Oliver back out in the flat to take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one situation. Kelly picks him up nicely, and of course, there's no help anywhere, and Thomas drags Oliver in for the score against the Dolphins. Number 99, Winston Moss, is one of the few Raider linebackers that can play one-on-one -on -one with a running back. In this case, Denver's Steve Sewell. Elway sprints out, Moss gets through some traffic, maintains nice coverage on the third down play. Of course, he'll be asked to cover Buffalo's Thurman Thomas today, a little more difficult task. A key loss to the Raiders' defense is Howie Long, who sprained a ligament in his left knee last Sunday night against the Chargers. Rookie Nolan Harrison, 6'5", 290 pounds, from Indiana, will be inserted into the lineup to take Long's place. It's tough. I mean, you're, you're talking about losing uh, an experienced veteran player and putting him in with a, uh, a young, un unexperienced, un NFL experienced uh, rookie. Uh, but uh, Nolan, I think what he lacks in experience makes up for in, in size and uh, excitement. So, uh, you know, he gets excited out there. And I think that's something that'll uh, that'll help us quite a bit. How is feared? You know, a lot of offenses, you know, they structure their offense, their their game plan around how we learn to either take it to them or they try to run away from them. What I want to do is, you know, because I know they're going to try to take it to me during the game, I want to make sure that they don't think that this is going to be a weak spot in the defense, that they're going to have trouble if they try to come my way. The Raiders' offense has been up and down all season. Three weeks ago against Seattle, the Raiders showed they could move the football and score points. And they're going to have to do that against Buffalo today, because you know Buffalo will score. Okay, last time, 51-3. to three. Does that matter today? Yeah, it matters because I think the Raiders will be able to use this as a measuring stick, but I think that game just got out of control. You throw games like that away. You know, the Raiders had played them in midseason on a Monday night game and had Buffalo beaten until the fourth quarter up in Buffalo. So this is a little different deal, and I think the Raiders use this as a measuring stick to where they are. Now, they've got Nick Bell back. They've got Marcus Allen back after he missed most of the season. So this enables them to do some things they couldn't have done had they played Buffalo earlier. Well, that's right, because that if, if Buffalo has a weakness, it's right at them. Those are big backs. They can run up inside tough, and, and that's what the Raiders are going to have to do, you know, if they're going to control the game. They're not going to win a shootout, but they've got to play the way they want to play and not mm -hmm. play the way Buffalo wants them to. There are two big matchups in this game that the Raiders have to contend with. One is what what to do with Thurman Thomas. He's the guy that other defenses can't seem to match up with. And I think that's one of the reasons the Raiders, after what happened in the championship game last year, went out and got Winston Moss, just like Miami went out and got Grimsley to try to cover him out of the backfield. The other one is what do you do with Bruce Smith, which is I'd like to ask you, because most teams are going to try to double him now. He's so good. And when that happens, you give up somebody out of your offense to try to help out the offensive tackle that's in front of them. Well, the best thing you could do there is use an extra lineman, make it a three-on-two situation over there, and hope that uh, there's not a blitz to contend with on the part of Buffalo very much, and, and release your back into the pattern most of the time, because you're right, you don't want to give up those offensive weapons. You want to get them out to control the Bills' coverage. All right, so it's the Bills and the Raiders from the Coliseum in L.A., the game most of you will see is the second half of today's NBC doubleheader. And NFL Live halftime activities will continue. NBC Sports presents the National Football League. 
Today, it's the Buffalo Bills versus the Los Angeles Raiders. Overcast and unseasonably cool in Los Angeles, where two American conference powers, the Bills and the Raiders, are ready to meet. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. The Raiders are still smarting from that 51-3 loss to Buffalo in the AFC Championship game last January. Raiders coach Art Shell wanted no talk about revenge this week. Big Art says revenge takes away from concentration, and that loses football games, Trump. But you know the Raiders want this bad. Yeah, they do want it bad, but you, you can never look back in the NFL. I mean, you got seven days to recover, even from the AFC Championship game. So this week, uh, the Los Angeles Raiders players and their coaches have only looked ahead. If you look back to last year, the Raiders not only lost the championship game, but the defense of the Raiders gave up 81, 89 points to the Buffalo Bills in 1990. The Bills come in here pumped. They've got their best player on defense back, the Grace Bruce Smith, who led the way last week in a win over the New York Jets as the Bills capture their fourth consecutive American Conference Eastern title. Smith did suffer a poke in the eye, though, Trump, but appears to be okay. We'll wear a shield today. Uh, took a time off in, in, in Buffalo this week during practice. Really didn't extend himself too much. And, of course, when you've got this guy on your defense, he's a magnet for the offensive players. He draws pass protection. He singles up other guys on the defense. Defense, uh, last year's most valuable defensive player, and still the Buffalo Bills are 11 and 1 without 11 and 2 without it. And right now it's the Raiders who've won the toss. The Bills will kick it off as we're ready to play football here in the Coliseum. Upwards of 85,000 are expected. And the Bills have beaten the Raiders the last three times they've played, both last three meetings in Buffalo. Bills have not played here in the Coliseum since 87 when the Raiders won handily. Brad Del Wizo. From UCLA, ready to kick it off. The Bills with the luxury of a roster spot for a man who's a pure kickoff man. Del Wizo hits it hard. Napoleon McCallum and Jamie Holland are back, and Del Wizo booms it eight yards deep. And McCallum from the Naval Academy elects not to bring it out. So the game begins with the Raiders going on offense first and ten at their 20-yard line. There is their offensive line. It's only allowed two sacks in the last three games. Wilkerson, Wisniewski, a pro bowler last season. Mo's Barr, one of the best centers. Montoya, standout at right guard. The former Bengal and right, the right tackle. Schrader at quarterback has had interception problems. He's coming off a bad game at San Diego. Raiders did win it. Smith and Craig, the starting runners. Galton Fernandez, wideouts. Ethan Horton's the tight end. He's caught 40 so far this year. They could go to him a lot. Roger Craig. Gets into the left side of the Bills defense. And the Bills, who had their best game against the run versus the Jets a week ago, stop it cold. Leon Seals, their best run stopper at left end, made the tackle. Up front along with Jeff Wright and Bruce Smith. The linebackers, Tally, Bailey, Conlon, and Bennett, all having standout years. Everybody had a pick it up a notch with the absence of Bruce Smith for almost 12 games. But now the big eraser is back. The big play man. And the Bills will are quick to say it's loosened up the whole defense. They can take more chances now because Smith makes up for mistakes. On second down, Schrader with a rollout, throwing a catch as he gets the ball downfield to the 34-yard line. Merck, the ball is taken there for an 11-yard gain by the tight end, Ethan Horton. And Trump, Bill's protesting it skipped in on the one half. Let's watch. You, know, Don, you don't normally see Jay Schrader run a lot of bootlegs. They like to keep him in the pocket. There's Leonard Smith, 46 on Horton. He may have a point. That ball did appear to pop loose, but... Uh, I think the Raiders watching the Jets last week. O'Brien likes to roll out a lot. Nice first down pickup. The Raiders told us during the week they want to be patient. That's one of the most difficult things the Raiders can possibly do, and I think we've got a review here, Don. Maybe it did come in on the one hop. Dick Hantax, the referee. From behind the play, watch his underneath his right arm. Does that ball come loose? Yeah. No, it looks like he's got it cradled in his left arm. I'd have to see it again before you can say for sure. Opening moments of the game and a disputed catch. Royal Cathcart is the man in the booth on replay. Uh, tough to see anything different there. So Royal Cathcart, the replay guy, has nothing to overturn. I think he has the ball in his left hand. You see, he's got a cradle there. And uh, Leonard, 
It looks to me like he's got his left arm under. That's not enough to overturn it. Play stands, Play stands is called on the field. Completed pass. First down. And that's the way it'll be. Play stands with 13.37 to go in the first quarter. Ethan Horton makes an 11-yard catch. A first down for the Raiders. They now have three wideouts in the game. Bills are going to play their wide receivers tight. They want to bump them at the line, try to take away some of that breakaway speed. Here's Roger Craig. Trying to turn up field, and Cornelius Bennett heading for first-team All-Pro honors, having his best season. He's had a good one every year. Runs down Roger Craig. Who now has more carries this year as a part-time back when he was acquired from San Francisco than he did last year with the 49ers. Of course, that's the injury to Bo Jackson. That's the injury to Marcus Allen, but... He has been, to say the least, overworked to this point in the season. He's not been in the end zone often, though. Roger Craig with just one touchdown this season. Raiders needing this game all the more because word has come in that Denver has won at Cleveland. The Broncos standing with a half-game lead over the Raiders pending the outcome of this game. On second down and nine, and out pattern golf makes the catch, and Nate Odoms puts on the strike. Don, as I was mentioning earlier, the, the Raider offensive coaches kept telling us they want to be patient, take the air out of the ball, not give the Buffalo hurry-up offense many opportunities. That's probably the most difficult thing for Art Shell to admit, that he wants to be patient. This is an offense that for the last 30 years is get it down the field. Vegard saying he wants to make Jim Kelly impatient, standing on the sidelines. He had Kelly in the Pro Bowl and just raved about him, not only his ability to throw the ball, but his intellect on the field. He said he is truly one of the great ones, but he does want to score points and move the ball, and we want him itching on the sidelines. We want to control the clock if we can. On third down and three, Bill shut down Roger Craig for no gain back at the 41 yard line. It was number 78. The great Bruce Smith making the play. And so the Raider drive stalls and they'll have to punt the ball. What kind of team is it when you lose the league's most valuable defensive player for 12 weeks and you're 11 and 2? I mean, Bruce Smith is an important part of this football team. But the Buffalo Bills are talented throughout. They've won without Kelly. They've won without Bruce Smith. They can win just about anywhere. Jeff Gossett, one of the very best. And his net punting average is almost 39 as Clifford Hicks, number 27, awaits the return for the Bills. Gossett booms a long punt that Hicks will let roll, and Gossett's ball rolls down the sideline and goes out of bounds at the two-yard line. 57 yards and out of bounds at the two, as good as it gets for a putter. The Bills start out when we come back, but deep in their own end. This is our vision of what a luxury sedan should be. Not because it offers rich leather. By putter Jeff Gossett of the L.A. Raiders has set the Bills back in their own end at the two-yard line. Don, I noticed at the outset here that the Raiders are going with a 4 2 5. 21. Greg Lewis is the addition, the fifth defensive back for the Raiders. Bills go to the run, and Thurman Thomas, who Art Shell of the Raiders says is a player that has to be accounted for on every down. Somebody has to be specifically assigned to him, oftentimes more than one person. Golick and Greg Townsend made the stop as the Bills now work the no huddle. Right back into alignment, right back to Thurman Thomas, and not much there as he runs. On second and six for a couple of yards out to the seven-yard line. Trump? Nolan Harrison makes the tackle. My comment here is Buffalo must have outstanding and unbelievable confidence in this hurry-up offense, doing it from their own three-yard line. Very dangerous. Third down. Bills need about five. Oh. Right. And so the Raiders are set to get excellent field position. McKellar, the tight end, could not hold the ball. Winston Moss was there to help him lose it, so Kelly and the Bills offense, three downs and out on their first position, possession. Boy, that, that's inexcusable. That ball was right in the hands of Keith McKellar, normally a very sure-handed tight end. 
Tim Brown, the best punt returner in the, in the AFC, number 81, back for Chris Moore's punt. He hits the ball high and short. Brown moves up on it at the 38. And Tim Brown takes it down the far sideline inside the 25-yard line. He'll be ruled out of bounds at the 32. The punt just 32 yards, a seven-yard return, and the Raiders with their second possession already in field goal range, albeit long range. Tim Brown moving up on a high, short punt. The last time they played in January at Orchard Park, New York, the Bills had almost 400 yards offense, six touchdowns. Thurman Thomas had over 100 yards rushing, and that was in the first half. Yeah, well, you don't, if you're Marv Levy, you certainly don't want the Los Angeles Raiders starting their second drive at your 32. You want your defense out there for the long drive situation, not short drive. Jay Schrader hands off, and it's Marcus Allen spinning into the Buffalo defense and taking it down to the 25-yard line. Shane Conlon. Having a standout season at inside linebacker, number 58 makes the stop. But the Raiders run well on first down. You know, Don, if uh, the Raiders can get off here quick and uh, kind of convince the Buffalo Bills that uh, they're going to play, uh, they'll be fine today. We want to welcome those of you who have been watching the Pittsburgh-Houston game where the Oilers won with ease 31-6. to The win of the AFC Central here is Marcus Allen turning it outside. And he is down to the 21-yard line. He has a first down for the Raiders. This is Don Pricky with Bob Trumpy at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. An overcast, unseasonably cool day. And the Raiders, after getting a short Buffalo punt, after stopping the Bills in their first possession, the Raiders now in range for the best place kicker in the AFC, Jeff Jager. As Big Art Shell thought it was imperative to get out in front early. They were so far behind, they couldn't see up the last time they played Buffalo. Bill scoring 41 points in the first half of that AFC title game. On first down, they go back to Marcus Allen and the man who ran here at the Coliseum for the Trojans of Southern California, ran his way to the Heisman Trophy, is taken down by Leon Seals. But the Raiders, Trump, getting yardage, going right at the Bills. And they are being conservative. I'm trying to pick up what it appears to me it appears to me that, that the Raiders are using three offensive tackles, Don. They're, they're trying to unbalance the line against the Buffalo Bills. It's Van, it, it's uh, Reggie McElroy on the top side. Yeah, they're using an extra offensive lineman here. That tilt formation, they've used this earlier in the year. It didn't work that well. It is right now. An overload on the right side with huge blockers just looking to power their way at the Buffalo Bills. As we have movement and penalty markers down before the snap of the ball. A second down and four play coming up. A spirited encounter already. You know the Raiders. It was the worst defeat for a Raider team in the 28 years that Al Davis is head of this club. And I think we can pick up what the Raiders are doing here after the penalty call. Encroachment on the defense made contact. There is no foul on the offense as there was no play due to the encroachment. Five yard penalty, first down. Okay, let's uh, try to keep, here's the tight end right here, Horton, and here's McElroy. So they've got one, two, three, four, five, six offensive linemen in the game here against the Buffalo Bills. And Buffalo's having a little trouble adjusting to exactly what's happening here. They're trying to spread that defense out a little bit, Don, and to this point, it's worked. A converse of the last meeting when the Raiders were totally confounded by the Buffalo no-huddle offense. But early in this game, it is the Raider offense that is taking hold as they run it down inside the five-yard line. Marcus Allen, who missed much of the season with a knee injury and says he's still not 100%, looks in good form as he takes it ahead to the four-yard line. One of this game's greatest ambassadors. There's Walt Corey on the sideline, and he's got to figure out what he's going to do with his defense here. With the extra offensive lineman in there, Reggie McElroy, a longtime tackle, is going to spread this defense out, give the Raiders a little better chance. Walt knows it. Second down at the three-yard line. Allen's 
swept under. He lost a yard as he's taken down almost back at the five yard line. Shane Conlon, number 58, was the tackler for the Bills, lead tackler. And look what happens here. Here's Bennett. He comes right inside. Here's McElroy at the point of attack. You're supposed to get better blocking this it than this. Watch Bennett jump inside. Right there to be all over Marcus Allen. You, you hope that your blocking at the point of attack is going to be better than that. Marcus Allen's been the offense so far, Trump. He's run the ball five times in this drive. Every down. Marcus Allen set seven yards back is the deep back. It is third and goal from just inside the Bills' five-yard line. Allen. And the Raiders are stopped and will have to send out their ace. Jeff Jager, he counted for all the scoring a week ago at San Diego, and they beat the Chargers 9-3. to three. Good job by the people up front for the Buffalo Bills. You can see that initial move that Marcus Allen had to make. It really disrupted the timing of the play, and what a great psychological lift here for Buffalo. Stopping the Raiders, holding them to a three-point field goal in the initial stages of a game always makes your team feel, feel good. Here is Jeff Jager. He has hit on 27 of 31 field goal tries, the leading score in the American Conference with 104 points. He's been virtually automatic all year. He hits a 19-yarder. And the Raiders open the scoring as they go out in front, three to nothing. We were all tied up. The sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Starter. Look for the stars and you'll find Starter. By the new Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. By Head and Shoulders, because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And by Miller Lite. It's it and that's that. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey back at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, almost sold out as we check the Miller Lite 10-minute ticker. And Houston reigns as AFC Central champion coming out of that slide to win easily over the Steelers. San Diego was leading all the way at Kansas City, but now the Chiefs have forced overtime. After Jager hit the field goal from 19 yards out, here's the kickoff. It's taken downfield by Al Edwards. And he breaks it across the 20-yard line, out to the 25. And there the Bills will go on offense, first and 10. So the Bills getting a substantially better field position to start this drive. Glenn Black and his music, and only Miller Lite could bring him to you. four-man front these two linebackers and then five defensive backs the extra guy is Gary Lewis and they're gonna try to do the best they possibly can to double as many people as they possibly can for the Buffalo Bills offense Don and here come the Bills with the number one offense in the National Football League they go back to Thurman Thomas and he takes another hard strike as he goes off tackle on the right side and gets the ball out to the 29 yard line Nolan Harrison that vaunted rookie a huge one from Indiana and Greg Townsend, the Raiders' leading sacker, are on the tackle. Thomas has now run the ball three times for just nine yards. Swing pass. Thurman Thomas in the open field, but only for the moment as the Raiders close down. Thurman Thomas at the 32, and Kelly Trump is faced with a third down and four. Yeah, well, one of the things that the Bills like, though, is to lock your opponent defense onto the field. Whatever people you put in there, Initially, you're going to have to stay with in these situations, so it's still a 4-2-5 for the Raiders. Kelly takes a look, runs out of time, play fakes, and then drives upfield, diving across the 40-yard line, and he has a first down, and Jim Kelly is playing with a tender knee. It's not anything with ligaments or cartilage. It's a bursar sack that was bothering him. 
Yeah, he banged it on the turf last week against the Jets, and that is extremely sore. I, I mean, there's no way around it. That, that is real intense pain for a few minutes, but there's the quarterback with that linebacker mentality as he goes up underneath the center. Tough as a gun, Jim Kelly. Here's a handoff, and now the Bills start to move on the Raiders following the 10-yard run. Uh, Jim Kelly really doesn't hit the ground that hard with his knee, but it is very, very sore when you break the bursa in your knee. But he's tough enough. He'll play. The ball advanced out now as we have second down and three from the 49-yard line. Kelly gets time, and his throw is errant, though, as he triggers it on the far side to Al Edwards, who's been called on for an increasing role with the Bills. Because of the injury to Don Beebe, Al Edwards caught nine last week against the Jets. And you can see the attempt at double coverage there. 33. Anderson of the Eddie Anderson of the uh, Raiders was underneath that receiver. Kelly just overthrew him. Kelly's numbers not very impressive to start. One for three for three yards. Now an open man, but then nearly a pickoff by Winston Moss. Kelly had an open receiver, Andre Reed, running in the middle of the Raiders secondary, but Winston Moss, who's been a very important Plan B acquisition, rises up, gets a hand on the ball, and almost brought it in here, Trump. It almost looks as if Kelly doesn't see him. This is a great play by Moss because if he doesn't knock it away, Andre Reed makes the catch, and then did you see Ronnie Lott? A little elbow to the face of Andre Reed just to don't, don't come in here anymore, son. <laughs> Tim Brown is back. And there's the punter, Chris Moore. He was in the World League of American Football last season. He's been a big help to the Bills. In his wisdom, Tim Brown there catches the ball at the five-yard line. Now, now the Raiders have the long field to go when we come back. By Ronnie Lott. Who? Don't come in here. Well, Ronnie Lott's done that to a lot of people for a lot of years. One of the game's great hitters. Just a little yell in the air can serve a great purpose, too. And one of the game's great interceptors this season. He has seven already to lead the National Football League. His old team, the 49ers, has ten interceptions as a team. Now the Raiders go back to the run. And look at Roger Craig high-stepping his way out to the 20-yard line. A gain of 12 yards and a first down. Leonard Smith, one of the safeties, finally got him. Again, now you can see the attempt by the Raiders to spread this defense. Only this time they use two tight ends. McElroy is out of the game, and it's man-on-man -man blocking up front, and the front fr front three do an excellent job. Mosbar, Wisniewski, and Montoya really cleared out there for Roger Craig. 3.08 to go, first quarter. Raiders lead the game 3-0 on a 19-yard Jager field goal off their second possession. Craig working hard and he gets ahead on a first down carry for about four. Now while we have a moment, let's go to New York to NFL Live. Bob? Don, here's the big play for Kansas City. Once they trailed 14-0. Then off this play action fake by the replacement quarterback Mark Blasick and then the 16-yard touchdown pass to Harvey Williams, they took a 17-14 lead. San Diego came back and tied the game on a 28-yard John Carney field goal with 11 seconds left in regulation. Now with 11 minutes left in overtime, they're even up at 17. Thank you, Bob. Back at the Coliseum. The Raiders have the ball. Second down and six coming up for Jay Schrader. Staying with a conservative ground game. Now ready to put the ball up. And he makes the throw. It's lost and fumbled out of bounds. Looked like a catch. Steve Smith was hit hard by Shane Conlon. I think they're going to count that as a catch. These guys go way back together. From to Penn State, they played on that national championship team of Joe Paterno's. They were co-captains. Uh, again, Jay Schrader on kind of the half roll. Yeah, I think that's a catch and a fumble. And he can't gain any yards on it, but... Bring them back to the spot of the fumble. Correct. For the end of the run. Third down. Uh, Don, at the outset, Raiders are doing a great job of showing patience. Something that I think is very difficult for this team. But they probably are the fastest have the fastest stable of wide receivers in the game and you know before long Schrader who's got as big an arm as anybody playing is going to air it out maybe right now Hunt faking he makes the throw and Tim Brown is on the run one man to beat Kelso the free safety comes over he can't get him Tim Brown takes it inside the 20 he will go the distance no flags down a 78 yard touchdown for Los Angeles
That's why he was drafted, running with it after he catches it, Don. The Raiders with the quick strike that has been a hallmark of their play over the years. Hit the longest touchdown pass play that Schrader has thrown this season and that Tim Brown has in his career, the longest reception. Here he is right here. You see bump and run. They also run the blitz, deep safeties. The pattern is this way, and Tim Brown does a great job of getting away from the coverage. See, it looks like he's the primary receiver all the way, but then once he catches it, I could not pick up the man in coverage. Looked like Kirby Jackson, 47. Yes, Kirby Jackson, 47. This is great second effort by Tim Brown, not giving up on the pattern. But then when you miss a tackle against a guy like Tim Brown, 70 yard, 78 yards later, you're hoping there's a flag on the field. It didn't take long. 93 yards and four plays. The last 78 coming on the throw from Schrader to Tim Brown. Most of it on the run of this 1987 Heisman Trophy winner from Notre Dame who scored just his third touchdown of the season and Schrader who's coming off a bad game is off to a great start. He's hit four of four for 94 yards in the touchdown. Raiders to, to this point looking very smart offensively. Spreading the defense, running conservatively. That was not designed to go for a touchdown. That's a 10-yard completion and Tim Brown turns it into a 78-yard score. Raiders were lamenting the loss of the long ball offense they had when Bo Jackson was with them. Every time he touched it on the run, it was a threat to go the distance. Now the kickoff, and the Bills try to get back in field position as Al Edwards breaks it open. He's across the 35 and the 40. Al Edwards is gone. They'll not catch him inside the 30 and the 20. 91 yards to the end zone. No flags. And on the Bills' sidelines, it looks like they won the Super Bowl. Huge Man. block by Steve Tasker. He made the last block to spring Al Edwards. How much do we like this kind of a game? <laughs> yes, sir. This is the old AFL kind of football game, isn't it? Last at bat. Well, the Bills, seemingly out of it, all of a sudden are right back in it as Al Edwards runs one back 91 yards. 78. Goodness. Curtis Brown. We talked about Al Edwards and the increasing role he has with the injury to Don Beebe. He's really upped his receiving production with nine catches last week against the Jets. And now, replacing Beebe as a kickoff man, he runs it back 91 yards. Norwood drives the extra point out of a carom shot. But those count, too, if they go through, and it does. <laughs> Special teams are one-third of your football team, Don, and the Buffalo Bills spend a lot of time on them. Later on, there, watch the block by Steve Tasker coming in. 89, boom, right there. That's the last man that could get Edwards. 91 yards later, Buffalo on one play back in the game. Tasker has made the Pro Bowl on, in several seasons as a special teamer. He gets Torin Doran. And then Gary or Land has no chance to catch Al Edwards. And suddenly the celebration is over for the Raiders. We want action. We've got action at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. A minute 13 to go in the first quarter. And already 17 points are on the board. And the Raider fans are booing. Words of 90,000 here as we take a look at the Miller Lite 10 minute ticker. The Eagles rallying to beat the Giants. Dallas beats New Orleans for a ninth straight time at Texas. Bears come back big, and Detroit on two touchdown runs by Barry Sanders has opened a 14 0 lead over the Jets. Now the Bills are ready to kick it off. McCallum and Jamie Holland will be back. Brad Del Wiso, who opened the game with a kickoff, ready to hit it for Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, I'll take this. 
<laughs> Sitting to his left is double O, Jim Otto. A Hall of Famer. I saw George Blanda here. Normally on big games, Al brings in the big guns, and George Blanda and Jim Otto are two of the biggest. Couple of former Raiders, now in the Canton Hall of Fame. Bills get a break with the weather. It's, as we mentioned, unseasonably cool. It was almost cold yesterday at the Raiders' practice near the ocean. And again, Del Weasel with that powerful leg drives it into the end zone and out. And so the Raiders have to come out first and 10 on the touchback at their 20. A reminder that at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be presenting the Avis We Try Harder Award, which will be given to the game's MVP. Yeah, he's right certainly now, a candidate yeah, to this point. Right in there, along with Tim Brown of Los Angeles. Four for four, Schrader jogs back out. He had his best season a year ago when he threw for 19 touchdowns and just nine interceptions. This season with that last TD pass, he's now thrown for 15 scores, but he's been intercepted 14 times, more than all of last season. He's tough to get at, though. Sacked just twice in the last three games. Now they look to throw on first down. There's a fastball drilled over the middle. That is former number one draft choice of the Toronto Blue Jays, Willie Galt, who doesn't go over the middle much. Willie will take that deep sideline route. He likes it. He likes going for the goal line. Now you, you mentioned it, Schrader. Former baseball player yesterday at practice all he wanted to talk about was Bonilla's twenty nine million dollar contract. I said you made a mistake. You didn't stay with baseball. He said no nah, wasn't my choice. I couldn't hit the slider <laughs> and to make twenty nine million you got to hit the slider. He was a catcher. Third player picked in the entire draft one year. Had limited playing time in football at UCLA played only eleven collegiate games. Now the Raiders go to the run and very well is on second and ten. Roger Craig in his ninth year from Nebraska runs hard and gets across the twenty five yard line. Be a third down and four play arising tackler was Daryl Telly outside backer for the Bills. So far in the first half here we've seen Roger Craig we've seen Marcus Allen the big weapon on the sideline is Nick Bell the rookie that uh, Art Shell wants to put in in the second half after the defense is worn down. This guy is 257 pounds and was a 60 yard sprint man in college. Can you imagine that? How about the guy that had to catch him at the end of the runway? No, his indoor no, meets. No. He's now part of the wall. Schrader on third and four stands in, delivers the ball beautifully to Marcus Allen out of the backfield, and Allen's across the 40 and out across the 45 yard line, a gain of 21 yards on the play. Dwight Drain was the man in coverage. Allen out of the backfield, totally uncovered. Watch him on the right hand side of the screen. Somebody does something wrong here because he pops open there. It looks like Leonard Smith. Now that's Drain, 45, misread the coverage. Got the wrong information. You can't turn Marcus Allen loose out there in the flat. Marcus Allen approaching 12,000 career yards from scrimmage for the Raiders. Their all-time rusher, their all-time touchdown scorer. And that will do it for the first quarter of play. And a good one it was as the Raiders lead 10 to 7. Last year, Ty Detmer became the first of Brigham Young's outstanding quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy. The senior is the NCAA career passing leader. And with Detmer again leading the Cougars, it's the first time since 1978 that a Heisman Trophy winner returned for a chance to repeat. Here's an overtime final. We, we better check that score. We have the Indianapolis winning in overtime. It was the Patriots who won it in overtime. Here is a handout to welcome those of you who've been watching the New England-Indianapolis game. That bonus money apparently kicks in for the Patriots. Five wins, and a lot of players started to pick up on bonuses. A touchdown pass from Millen to Michael Timpson from 45 yards out in overtime. And the Patriots, who were way down on their home field, 17-3, come back to beat Indianapolis, the next opponent for the Bills. Raiders setting up on 
On a second down, they need just over a yard inside the Buffalo 45-yard line. Steve Smith working hard for yards. And he might have enough for the first down. While they check that out, we'll go to New York for another update. Here's Bob. Don, here's the play you mentioned. 45 yards from Hugh Millen to Michael Timpson with about six minutes remaining in overtime. And so the Patriots, who at one point trailed 17-3, they score with seven seconds left in regulation, a touchdown to tie it at 17, and then that one to win it, 23-17. to How does Coach Dick McPherson feel? A bizarre scene as he's all over his quarterback, Hugh Millen, at midfield. Back to Don and Trump. <laughs> Coach Mack, he will give you that headbutt. Yes, Trump. sir. Yeah, Coach Mack will go anywhere to give somebody a high five when they win. We got a measurement here on the field, and it looks like Nick Bell, the big hammer, has come in here. The Bills, as their fans know well, have not historically been a good team on grass fields during the Marv Levy era. And this is Marv's fifth full season as head coach. The Bills are four and nine playing on grass. They went to Tampa last January and played on grass, losing to the Giants in the Super Bowl. Next Super Bowl, as you're probably aware, is on artificial turf in a dome. Minneapolis Dome. Raiders putting some pressure on the Bills in that competition for home field. And so does Denver by both winning today. Here's the big back in now, Trump, Nick Bell. Nick Bell is the man at 257 pounds. He hits down to the 40-yard line. This is the guy who was a Big Ten sprinter for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, they, those, those guys used to be offensive linemen. And now this guy is running from eight yards deep. They're running to the tight end. Watch him bounce off the first tackler. Who was a uh, uh, Leonard Smith, who is considered one of the game's great hitters. He just bounces off of his hips. He had a pulled hamstring early and cracked a couple of ribs, so he's not played much this year, but the Raiders are counting heavily on him. You saw he had good numbers last week against San Diego. His best game, Nick Bell. He's still in there. On second and eight, Jay Schrader buys some time with a good fake and then throws the ball almost out of sight. Mervyn Fernandez was somewhere in the vicinity, but not close. Nate Odoms was right with Fernandez. That was a major league overthrow. Watch what they're doing with Bruce Smith. Whoa. That's Mosbar, the center, coming out. I thought that was illegal. One guy can't engage the defensive end and have another guy banging his knee. That's the center coming out on the defensive end. When you're that good a pass rusher, unfortunately, you have to pay that kind of price. Well, I know this. It's been done to him before, and he will pay you back. Now he's on the other side, Don. Wait. Schrader... Makes a look, makes the throw, there's the connection to Ethan Hurt. He's inside the 25-yard line. Leonard Smith, the strong safety, having problems covering Ethan Horton. The resultant gain, 17 yards, and the Raiders challenge again. Raiders have historically converted running backs to tight ends. Ethan Horton, Ethan Horton, just another one. Billy Cannon started the tradition here. Todd Christensen did it. Ethan Horton, a first-round draft pick of the Kansas City Chiefs. They sent him down to Marv Marinovich uh, Health Salon down in Anaheim, try to make him a little stronger. And he's turned out to be an excellent receiver. Two catches today, 42 for the season. He's been in the end zone four times. Schrader on the rollout, very mobile. Throwing on the run, just a little bit behind Ethan Horton. You can see where Schrader played a lot of baseball because he has that quick flick throw like a catcher off his knees trying for a pickoff. You can see Horton on the offside. Actually, Shane Conlon knocks Daryl Talley down, but the ball thrown behind the receiver. Boy, he was wide open, and you don't normally see Jay Schrader roll out that much, bootleg that much. Whatever it takes to get away from Bennett and Smith, Schrader with good numbers, though, Trump. Six of nine at one touchdown to Tim Brown, 132 yards. First down, Cap. Raiders with a big advantage there, as you saw, 8-1 to one with 11.47 to play in the first half. Raiders lead 10-7. Fastball again, and Fernandez has it skip off his hands. Biggest difference between Kelly and Schrader at this point 
his deep accuracy throughout their careers so far. Schrader really can throw hard, though. This is single coverage out here. If uh, Fernandez catches that little hitch, they're hoping he can make one move and get by Kirby Jackson for the score. I got to hand it to the Raiders. They're remaining patient as you watch Jim Kelly on the sideline, who does not like to sit on the sideline. Another extended Raider drive, this one. 11th play coming up. Last week against San Diego, Schrader threw three interceptions. He's not thrown any in his previous three games as Marcus Allen slashes inside the 15. Taken down on the play by safety Leonard Smith. Now, big choice here for Archell. Fourth and about the length of a football. Terry Robisky on his right. Todd Marinovich, number 12. Yeah, there goes Nick Bell back in the ballgame. I was going to say, at 257 pounds, I got to get Nick Bell in there somehow. Steve Smith, the lead blocker. Excellent lead blocker. Big defensive line, big offensive line. This is going to be a wreck somewhere, Don. What you were pointing out a little bit ago, Bob, about the chop blocking on Bruce Smith. We'll see if that continues and what it leads to. Raiders take a timeout here trying to get the right personnel on the field, Don. 10.56 to go in the first half. The Raiders get some counsel now, give it to their quarterback, Jay Schrader. would like to pose the following question. Could your heart benefit from the use of another 24 valves? The Acura Legend Coupe. I had this doozy of a sore throat. You know what my doc suggested? Chloroseptic. I actually felt the pain go away in seconds. Because chloroseptic penetrates on contact for fastest relief. More doctors say chloroseptic spray. The Windsurfer from Citizen Promaster. Rotating compass bezel. Auto repeat fixed timer. I can't believe that's really you up there. Citizen Promaster. For professional use only. With Domino's Pizza's season National Football League is brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call Domino's Pizza right now and you'll be enjoying a hot, delicious pizza during halftime. The Coliseum in Los Angeles, one of the biggest Raider crowds. I guess the 49er crowd approached it, but this is close to a 92,000 sellout. Don, the uh, Raiders just changed personnel again. They got two wide receivers, three wide receivers, and Marcus Allen is the lone running back. A lot of times this year on short yardage, they've been running left, but this time they go to their quarterback, Schrader calling his own number, and behind Mose Bar, his Pro Bowl center, he appears to be ahead for the first down. So the Raider drive continues as they're down to the 13-yard line, first and 10. Raiders, Raiders no run. You know, he's a big kid. He can carry the ball. They get a good push here up the middle. Mosbar, Montoya, Wisniewski. You see 72 popping out of there. Mosbar just kind of crawling on his hands and knees. Nice bow, first down pickup. that big guy his third touchdown for the big rookie from the University of Iowa and the Raiders go back in front 16 to 7 a 13 yard drive 13 play drive covering 80 yards extra point up and good and the Coliseum's rocking again as the Raiders hit it up the middle for a touch 
Honey, look, what comes with this new steak sauce burger combo? Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Burger King, where you always get great tasting food your way, right away. By Acura Automobiles, experience precision crafted performance. By Citizen Promaster, for professional use only. And by the employee owners of Avis, we try harder. Downtown Los Angeles, rising in the distance, as the Raiders have just gone on the game's longest drive, 13 plays, 80 yards. And again, using that clock well, Trump. Six minutes and three seconds, taking the air out of the ball of Buffalo. Combined time of possession, wow. Now Jager kicks off another high spinner. This time he kicks away from Edwards who ran the last one back for a touchdown. It's to Kenneth Davis, and he has to work hard to get to the 23-yard line. Now, as we go back to the touchdown, we got a flag on the field, but watch the lead block by Steve Smith as Bell heads right up in there. Beautiful lead block. He gets right to the right to the, the linebacker, fires right through him. It's Ray Bent Bentley, and this is from Bentley's back. Bang. 12 yards. Bell is there in a hurry. His third touchdown. Illegal of the block season. on return, number 45. 10 yard penalty. First down. So the Bills with an illegal block on the return are again set back deep in their own end to start this drive. Their offense has been virtually non existent. They've had one big play, and that was the kickoff return of 91 yards by L. Edwards for a touchdown. It's a 17 to 7 game with 10 minutes and one second left to go in the first half. The NFL's number one offense, a pop gun affair so far as the give is to Thurman Thomas and he breaks it out across the 20 yard line. Thurman Thomas ahead for a gain of about eight yards. The Raiders talk about not only his quickness, but his enormous leg strength. He breaks tackles in addition to great speed. I guess that there's only one complaint about Thurman Thomas is that he does take himself out of the game. Oh, look at the difference in yardage there between the two. Bills go back to the run and then a penalty marker is fired in by the umpire from off the play. Looks like a holding call against the Bills. That's what it usually indicates. Now, right now, the Bills are looking like the Raiders did last year in Orchard Park, aren't they? Coach Levy looking for answers as we check Holding. the offense. Number 67. 10 yard The center, Ken Hull. Just saw the Schick Tracer 10 minute ticker. Game clock with 9.32 showing in the second quarter. Ken Hull, one of the best offensive linemen in pro football, called for the hold. And now the Bills are set back in second and 13. Kelly throws in his goal line. And he's got a man, but it's tipped away. Well done by McDaniel, number 36. The left side corner came across, got a hand on the ball in front of Andre Reed and broke up what looked like a sure thing. You see that Reed's got a break inside McDaniel, and then he really rounds off the pattern. Reed is a better receiver than that. If he comes flat down the line, he makes himself a much better target. But that incompletion, Kelly now one of five for just three yards. Kelly again at the goal line. Here comes the rush. Kelly dumps it off. McKellar, the tight end, is running, and he is upended. Taking him down is Torin Dorn, and the Bills have to punt from their end zone. Loss of two yards. Nolan Harrison, great pressure on Jim Kelly. 94 is Anthony Smith. Davis, number 70. But 74 is Harrison. Flushes him out of the pocket. The Bills' number one offense doing nothing so far. And the Bills the best at converting third downs over 50% this season. Not today. Here's the punt to Tim Brown, the ever dangerous one. The AFC's leading punt returner who has scored already today on a 78-yard touchdown pass plane. Here's a penalty marker down after a 49-yard punt and a six-yard return by Brown. Now that's going to be on the Raiders. But the play came on fourth and 13. 
If it was offside, it won't help the Bills. No, it's not offside. It was, it was, a was holding. A, yeah, I think it's a personal foul. That was a first down. Could have been one other guy were holding a guy. That yep. Yeah. That'll be a first down. That's an automatic first down. Not smart. Uh, looks can tech the referee. Don, it looks like they're going to give the ball to the Raiders and assess the 10 yards. So it's a post possession foul after the ball was kicked. We have holding on return. The foul took place while the ball was in the air after the kick and before possession. We will penalize 10 yards from where possession was gained. Well done by Dick Hantek sorting it out. And now we'll take a break as the Raider offense sets up. I'm Cricky with Bob Trumpy back at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. 8.29 to go in the first half. And the Raiders, the dominant team today after they were brutalized by the Bills last January in the AFC title game at Orchard Park, New York. Raiders leading 17-7. The Bills offense has done virtually nothing if you joined us late. They got their touchdown on a 91-yard kickoff return by Dale Edwards. Now the quick hitch, the out, is thrown to Willie Galt at the 33-yard line. Cornelius Bennett tackles him as we look at the Schick Tracer 10-minute ticker. Raiders moving the ball with a combination of offense. Started out running Marcus Allen. Now they've changed up their running backs. They've really been using a troika of runners Three running backs getting work in the recent weeks. Steve Smith, Napoleon McCallum getting some, but it's been primarily Craig Allen and Smith. And now Nick Bell working his way in. And second and ten. Nick Bell, big as he is, finds an open gap and cuts through it. Gets a head out to the 37-yard line. Tacklers on the play were Cornelius Bennett and the nose tackle Jeff Wright. Now, Donna, notice what Nick Bell does here. A guy this size coming out of college ran over people. And, and he told us yesterday that Marcus Allen has helped him a great deal setting up blocks. That time, just a little juke to the outside, and he picks up an easy, what, six, seven yards? That he does. Now Marcus Allen's in the backfield with Steve Smith. Archell keeping fresh troops on the field. His infantry, the ground people, and here is Schrader with the throw and a catch by Marcus Allen. He's ahead to the 44-yard line. It's a first down for the Raiders. So Defensive far, back Smith and Green were on the tackle for Buffalo. Uh, excuse me. So far, Raiders doing a good job of protecting Jay Schrader. Bennett's been no factor. Neither has Bruce Smith. Neither has really gotten a lot of pressure. But Jay Schrader shows great pa patience here. Allen just breaks up underneath. Taking on the two safeties. Nice five-yard completion for a first down. It's interesting, Trump. Both coaches seem to think that the turnover count could decide the outcome. The team that turned it over the most was going to lose. So far, they've kept the turnover count down to nothing. First and ten. Bell coming out as a receiver. Here's a long ball. But again, Schrader's off target. Tim Brown had the corner beaten. But Schrader overthrows him overthrow him that overthrow that was an understatement that almost made it to the seats and here in the Coliseum that takes some doing one of the things you're going to see all over the field is pushing and shoving the defensive back there Kirby Jackson uh, excuse me Odoms has his hands all over Tim Brown Tim Brown didn't like it but that's called incidental contact Now the Bills drop people back deep in a zone as it's second down and 10 for Schrader and the Raiders. Nick Bell runs the ball, and the Bills close it down quickly. Good play by Daryl Talley, number 56, coming from an outside backer position to make the stick. Here we go with the pushing and shoving. Rory Graves, Bruce Smith, well, just about anybody. What's Wisniewski doing there without his helmet on? So he got out of his it's a mouthpiece. He had a laugh yesterday that Roger Craig was talking about the loss, 51 to 3. 
He said, I really didn't care about that loss because I was a 49 at the time. He said, now I'm real mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were also relating, Bob Golick was relating a halftime speech that Marcus Allen tried to make. He said, come on, man, they scored 41 in the first half. We can score 41 in the second half, can't we? <laughs> they couldn't. Marcus tried to stir the troops at halftime to no avail. Now the Raiders with a whole new look on offense. Three wide outs deployed right, all in fairly tight. It's going to bust somebody loose deep. Kelly jumped in, jumped back, and they go to the run. And a good open field tackle by free safety Mark Kelso. And the Raiders have to punt the ball. And again, they start up after the play. Hey, interesting choice on that play by the Raiders. Cut, tried to fool Buffalo. They got man coverage, and then they run... Just a little dive play to that side. All the defensive backs were deep in coverage, but Kelso does a good job. He's up there to make the tackle. Clifford Hicks will drop back. And there is Jeff Gossett, who displayed his brilliance as a punter earlier with a 57-yarder that was placed out of bounds at the Bills' two-yard line. Gossett has to hurry. The Bills are expert at blocking kicks. They blocked four last week at New England. <laughs> 44-yard punt and no return. Bills try to move the ball when we come back. Citizen and Beast and Glenn Hollander. As they cruise above foggy Los Angeles. Temperature has moved into the low 60s. And the Bills offense has been in low gear all day. They've not been able to move the ball with any consistency as Kelly pumps long on first down. A diving try by Al Edwards at the 50-yard line. And a penalty marker down in the Bills' backfield. And it looks like holding against the Raiders. I, I think he got poked in the eye. I think... It, it looked to me like Jim Kelly got hit in the eye, Don, right at the late. It looked like Nolan Harrison, 74, gets his hand up in the face. He had a, that, that head That's slap. Personal foul. Personal foul. Defense, number 74, roughing the passer. Blow to the head. First down. Don, I don't think that was intentional. I really don't. And he's a rookie out of Indiana. And he's replacing Howie Long, but it appeared to me getting off the block, that was unintentional. There's his mentor, Howie Long. Up below two first down, one by penalty. Kelly makes the throw, and Thurman Thomas coming over the middle, makes a reception, and is out to the 29-yard line, a gain of close to five yards. Middle linebacker Ricky Ellison was the tackler, number 50 for the Raiders. He's a born and bred linebacker. I'll tell you why later. I'll tell you why later. Played on this field for Southern California, a native New Zealander. Kelly now finding the mark. Here's another throw over the middle. As Winston Moss comes hunting high to take down Andre Reed, who just made his 68th catch of the season. Well, you know, that's one thing about the Buffalo Bills. They're down 17 to 7. Their offense hasn't done anything, but this is a very self-confident football team. They are not about to give up here. Kelly getting time and finding the mark again. This time it's Thurman Thomas. A man who is far from done once he catches it. Weaving ahead a 14-yard gain as Kelly methodically starts to move the Bills. An offensive drive that certainly was spurred on by the personal foul call against Nolan Harrison. Well, they got defensive changes here for the Raiders. They were able to make the substitution. Tip ball. And a catch. Looked clean all the way down to the 45-yard line of the Raiders. Tight end Keith McKellar got his hands on it. Uh, Don, that was one of the concerns that Dave Adolph had about playing this hurry-up offense is you can't change personnel. But it looked like Harrison again got his hand up. They were also able to get some extra defensive backs on the field. Thurman Thomas finds a way when there seemed to be nothing there. And on second down and six, Thurman Thomas is inside the 40, taken down by the veteran Jerry Robinson, number 57. But Thomas, who comes into the game, leading the National Football League in rushing with 55 catches this season coming into the game. And here now, Thurman Thomas again. 
catch a thunderous hit from Ronnie Lott. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Lott KO'd himself. This time the hitter is the hit E. I don't like the way he's lying there. Oh, he's up. He's moving. Uh, yesterday at practice, Paul Zimmerman of Sports Illustrated and I were talking to Al Locasal, and he was talking about Ronnie Lott. And Al Locasal's Al line on Ronnie Lott is perfect. He says he's a great tiebreaker as you watch him come in there and hit Thurman Thomas. He said, down the field, you have receiver, defensive back, and then Lott comes in. He breaks up the tie. He knocks both people to the ground, and the ball falls incomplete. Very crude up in now to take his place. Ronnie Lott. Got a phone ringing in that helmet. They asked Ronnie Lott how he'd like to be remembered as a player when he finally does retire. This is his 11th year. And he said as a guy who gave 110% for his teammates, as a player who had the will to win. Hey, you know, I think it's interesting that Ronnie Lott is such a great athlete that at San Francisco, he was a free safety. He comes here, and he starts as the strong safety for the Los Angeles Raiders. Now, wait a minute. Can he come back on the field? If they took an injury timeout, Lott cannot play in this play. They did measure so the clock was stopped. I guess they didn't take, say that was an injury timeout so he can be on the field. The Raider crowd starts up as the Bills go into alignment now with a power set. Double tight ends. Now we got the umpire stepping in there. He's in communication with the guy upstairs. I think, they're gonna, I think they're going to make Ronnie Lott leave the field. Let, let's see what happens here. Yeah. See, when the trainers came out on the field, Don, that's an injury timeout of protection to Ronnie Lott. And once he's out, then he cannot come back in on the same play. He's got to be out of play. Ronnie Lott saying, wait a minute, you call timeout to measure so I can stay back in. I think Dick Hantak will win this one. I think Lott's got to come out on a fourth down and short. He, oh, he's saying, all right, you're all right. We stopped the clock for the uh, measurement. He gets to stay in. Interesting choice. They reset the clock to 25 seconds. So now Marv Levy, who will quote Churchill before he'll quote Woody Hayes, is happy. <laughs> Fourth and one. Raiders dig in, and the Bills bring Metzelaars in motion and send a running back right at the Raiders. Let's see. The spots everything. The linesman comes in. If he got it, it's going to be by the nose of the ball. Carwell Gardner, the big back, 235-pound runner from Louisville. Look at the Buffalo defense. They don't think the offense made it. Some of those uh, pile-ups, you, know, you might find Jimmy Hoffa down there when you get up one day, you know? You can't tell who's down there. You can get injured, though. You're going to measure. He might be just short. We'll take a look now as the game clock is stopped with 2.26 to play in the first half. Raiders take over the ball. the ball carrier 94 Smith Ellison 50 in there a host of Los Angeles Raiders look at Smith 94 stand the center up he's got nowhere to go that's a great job by the defense down to this point Buffalo's won the division for the fourth straight year they're playing for home field advantage it's a tough sell on the road against the Raiders they, the, the, the Bills just don't have the edge. But the sell became a little bit more apparent or that they needed it. Because Houston won today. And so did Denver. 
And now the Raiders trying to run don't get much as Bruce Smith slips the block and makes a driving hit on big Nick Bell who weighs almost as much as Smith. And Don, again, the Raiders' choice, they go with the six offensive linemen. Reggie McElroy in there again at tight end. Has to report on every play. Where's 77? And that last play will take us down to the two-minute warning. So with two minutes to go in the first half, the Raiders remain in command of the game, 17 to 7. An Olympic moment brought to you by Panasonic, helping to train America's Olympic athletes. Mexico City, 1968. Kip Kano of Kenya leads in the final stretch of the Olympic 1500 meter run. Kano wins the gold medal and sets a new Olympic record. Kip Kano, one of the great African runners. Super duper duper. It's got Before you buy a compact camcorder, ask. Will its tapes play in my VCR? No. It's got a million answer. answer. <laughs> Six egg zoom. Oh, oh, will its tapes play in my VCR? No. What? Now this is the Panasonic Palm Quarter camcorder. Will its tapes play in my VCR? Yes, it's VHS, so its tapes can play in all VHS recorders. Will its tapes play in my VCR? It will, when it's the Palm Quarter from Panasonic. Each year, corporate America spends over $10 billion on overnight shipping. Yet according to a report in the Wall Street Journal, three billion of that is wasted. If you find that kind of inefficiency alarming, call UPS. We can save you up to 40% on overnight deliveries and help prevent your profits from going up in smoke. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. There is a sound that you can expect to hear above the music. It's the sound of German being spoken by those who bring their passion for life to places like these. Bex, the number one imported German beer in your town, America, and the world. Archell, the coach of the Los Angeles Raiders, talked about revenge being counterproductive. He wanted his Raiders to concentrate on every down, every player, and they've been doing that as they've dominated the Bills. Look at the overall yardage. That's something. Uh, last year in, in the AFC Championship game, didn't Buffalo have 400 yards in the first half? 387 and 3 six touchdowns. Yeah. 41 points. The Raiders with a 10-point lead. Set up second down and eight, just short of their 40-yard line. Schrader, who's been throwing the ball more as the game wears on, fires an out pass and... Ethan Horton might have heard footsteps because coming up hard was number 47, Kirby Jackson. It was a catchable ball. Yeah, he got let that ball get to his shoulder pads. He, he could sense what was happening. There's Bennett. They run a little pick. Now, see, you see Horton look out of the corner of his eye? Boy, oh, catch that ball with your hands. And let his shoulder pads just reject that one. Right in front of the head coach, too. Lousy place to miss a reception like that. Miss it on the other side, not in front of that guy. Art Shell, who's turned the Raiders around since he got the chance to be their head coach, one of their great players, a 15-year offensive tackle, immortalized in the Hall of Fame in Canton, and now on the rollout on third down, Schrader gets time, throws downfield, and again, he's off the mark. He had to get it in over the zone. But still, a wide-open receiver is missed. Too high to catch as Galt went up and didn't come down with it. Now the Raiders will punt. Now yeah, Schrader's had a run of tough luck. Here's two for his last nine. You were talking, Trump, about Marv Levy and his analogies of war to football. One of them is that, unlike war in football, you want the home field advantage. In war, you don't. Shoot it out of nerve. Yeah, I, I, would, I would guess that some of his meetings are very entertaining. Another well-hit ball. Clifford Hicks feels it at the eight for Buffalo off the foot of Jeff Gossett. And the Raiders with superior... Oh, he's got a chance. He's now got a chance. the second line is set. There are no markers down. And Clifford Hicks, as you can see, is on the run. It looked like they had him inside the 10. Instead, he moves the ball down to the 32-yard line of the Raiders. Mike Jones finally got him. So a job well done by Jeff Gossett. But the Bills special teamers break it open after a 52-yard punt. The run back was 59 yards. I didn't think he was going to get there, Don. He had a heavy weight on his back, about 40 yards into this return. But Watch Jefferson missed. 
That's McCallum misses 41, and now the picket line is set up. Harwell Gardner with a big block. But you get to about this point, and all of a sudden, that big, heavy weight gets on your shoulders. Feet get stuck in the mud. And Buffalo now with great field position. Leonard Smith on Jeff Gossett. Gossett on Tasker makes the tackle. But not a lot of time. 1.28 to go in the first half. As Kelly aligns in the gun, he calls the formation, the play, and the snap count in some arcane language that only the Bills understand. Here's the throw to McKellar, the tight end. And with the tackler aboard, he takes the ball down to the 25-yard line. He also calls the protection. And Ricky Allison makes that, that tackle. Goodness, the special teams have been the entire situation for Buffalo here. They, they won't speak that language in front of outsiders. But they have their own talk. Bill speak, and here's another throw down to the nine-yard line. Al Edwards protecting the ball for a 16-yard gain, and the Bills call a timeout. So now, all of a sudden, after struggling, the Bills start to look like the best offense in the NFL. Virtually no time at all. They're inside the 10-yard line. This Christmas, kick off the holidays with the only full-blown action movie of the season. Bruce Willis, Damon Wayans. The last Boy Scout, rated R. Starts Friday, December 13th at a theater near you. Let's check now the Schick Tracer 10-minute ticker. Phoenix up on the Redskins at halftime. Get out of here. I think that was a Costas prediction. Get out of here, Joe Bugle. Detroit up 21-14. The 49ers leading Seattle 10 to 9 at the half. And now the Bills break the huddle, trailing 17 to 7. 57 seconds to play in the first half. Kelly with four receivers deployed out. He'll throw quickly. The drop. Now look. He's going to take it himself. Jim Kelly fires. Oh, was he over the line? Apparently he was not. It goes for six. Touchdown, Buffalo. Brilliant execution by Kelly. We're going to make that split-second decision. Do I run or do I stop and throw? And he was just short of the line of scrimmage when he released a touchdown throw that gets the Bills right back in it. Keith McKellar, the tight end, was the outlet receiver. The primary receiver was Thurman Thomas, and there was good double-team coverage on Thurman Thomas as he came out of the, out of the backfield. Great adjustment by Jim Kelly on that play, Don. Scott Norwood's on for the point after try. 50 seconds to play. That scoring drive took all of 38 seconds. So the Bills offense shows what it's all about. And the Raiders, who had a 10-point lead, now see it cut to three. Watch how good a job this is. Here's Thomas. Here's one man in coverage, two men in coverage, as he runs the corner. And then the tight end, I can't even, here's McKellar right here. He just runs down and around. Kelly does a great job of going to the outlet receiver. Watch the double coverage. See, Thomas is the intended. Now McKellar turns back at the back of the end zone. Beautifully executed. Boy, that's staying with the quarterback. When he rolls left, the receiver runs left. Makes himself a receiver. Third touchdown catch. Boy, special teams have kept Buffalo in his game in the first half, haven't they, Don? They have indeed. The 29th touchdown pass of the season. He established a Bills record when he threw his 27th. He leads the NFL, does Jim Kelly. 29 TD throws and 16 interceptions. He talks about those brothers of his. There are five of them who remind him of his interceptions, not his touchdowns. <laughs> they keep him humble, he says. Kelly, after uh, starting one for five, has now gone eight for his last eight, Don. Nine of 13, 67 yards and a touchdown. And thank you to the special teams. At halftime, we'll be checking in with the Domino's Pizza NFL Live halftime report. Some interesting games today indeed as we start down the stretch run of the season. Will, Bill, Bob, and O.J.'s out here. On the field he loves so well from his days as a Trojan with Southern California. O.J. living in Los Angeles and driving up to the stadium today in a car that's worth more than my house. And mine. The good wheels, O.J. Uh, that studio bunch did well. That, thing, huh? that studio bunch does well. It's not bad. It's not bad. Like a rocket ship out there. 
The kickoff has bounced downfield to Jamie Holland. He crosses the 20 and the 25, and he's out to the 31-yard line. So the Raiders, with a long way to go and little time to do it, have 44 seconds to work with. It's been a big play game. There he is. Yeah, you know, you're right about that. You're right about that car. But presently in Los Angeles, there's no place to go to get it out of first gear. It is one big parking lot. And the license plate. Juices. 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 OJ, you're doing all right. For a while there, we thought he might have to suit up for the Bills. Here's the handoff, and Marcus Allen runs in the open field. Isn't he still great to watch? Marcus Allen with that great burst and cutback move is ahead for a 14-yard gain. Conversation with him yesterday. Asked him if his knee was 100%. He said no. A nice little delay by Allen. Watch the way he sets those blocks up. Done that beautifully throughout his career. Nine carries, 50 yards, but he said his leg hurts more when he bends it from the scar tissue from the knee injury earlier in the season. The opening game of the season against Houston, but one of this game's greatest running backs. Seventeen fourteen is the score. Raiders in the lead. There's, oh. the, there's the car up there. Yeah, you know, with that license plate, and everybody knows who drives that, there's never a ticket on that car in this town. You know that, especially around this stadium. He okay. can park in the end zone and here, here if, they want, if he wants to. They wouldn't touch it. Los Angeles, it might be safe without somebody watching it. New York, it would be gone in 30 seconds. They can make those disappear like a rabbit into a hat. <laughs> Don, are you serious? I never had mine stolen, only broken into about eight times for radio. <laughs> Jay Schrader goes with a draw play, and again he goes to Marcus Allen, who's taken down. Cornelius Bennett, with as much speed as any back on the field, runs down Marcus Allen. The game clock keeps ticking. Raiders apparently content to go to the locker room with their winnings. A three-point lead. Schrader's going to air it out. Here's a hard throw. The catch is made. Heading for the sidelines is Mervyn Fernandez. He's out of bounds with 10 seconds to play at the 40-yard line. A 16-yard gain. That's it. That'd be a 57-yard 57 field, 57 field goal attempt. I don't think so. Excellent pattern. Oh, you, you see the prevent mindset here of the Buffalo Bills. Lay back, lay back, make sure you can tackle them underneath. Leonard Smith gets him out of bounds. Don, I do notice that Daryl Talley, 56 of the Bills, is on the sideline. Being attended to by physicians or trainers or both. Try to get an injury report. What a player he's been. It's another eye problem. We're told that his contact lens is either out or off to the side as Schrader fires downfield. This is Tim Brown. And Brown, looking for room, gets down to the 11-yard line with Whoa. one second left, and the Raiders call timeout. What a smart play by Tim Brown. He went to the ground himself yeah. to stop the clock. The player in possession of the ball on a football field can call timeout at any time. He doesn't have to be hit. He can just stop and call timeout, and that's what Tim Brown did when he went down. What a smart play. He's the slot receiver wide open. I don't know what's going on with the defense here, but it looks like he catches the clock and goes down to stop it. Very smart play. One tick left, and uh, that is that is having your head in the game. The player in possession of the ball can call timeout at any time, and the player in the possession of the ball can kick it at any time in football. You can be running down past the line of scrimmage and booted out of the stadium if you so choose. Most in their wisdom haven't decided to do that, but uh, no coach would like that. Tim Brown now, two catches for 106 yards. I like that average, 53 yards a catch. So the Raiders move quickly with virtually no time, and now they set up for a Jager field goal. He hit his first of the day to open the scoring. This is a 28-yarder. Gassett is the holder. And the leading score in the American Conference. Hits it up and through. 
He's at 29 of 33 this season. The Raiders go to halftime with a 20 to 14 lead. We'll be back with the Domino's Pizza halftime report and a word from your local stations. Join Alan Jackson, Willie Nelson, Eddie Rabbit, and Mom, and me. The Judd's final network appearance on Hot Country Nights, NBC, tonight. Wednesday, one woman in America has inherited a million. Could it be you? Plus, an amazing new update. All new Unsolved Mysteries, NBC Wednesday. Riding along in my automobile. This is a car that's definitely going places. It's called Elantra, a new sedan so well-built and worry-free, it even comes with its own security blanket. Two years service and maintenance free. About all you pay for is gas. Now, why would you want to go anyplace than anything else? The new Elantra from Hyundai. Yes, Hyundai. Cornelius Bennett, you force fumbles, intercept passes, even sack quarterbacks. What are you going to tackle next? A CB triple. McDonald's CB triple, the Cornelius Bennett triple cheeseburger with bacon. For only $1.99, the CB triple is over a quarter pound of great cheeseburger taste. And there's bacon in every bite. Add a Coca-Cola classic and it's even better. Man, these are so big, I can only eat 97 of them. The CB triple, only $1.99 at McDonald's. Tis the season to be jolly, but it's also the season to drink wisely. In this spirit, we make Jenny and A. For those times that call for a Jenny, but don't call for alcohol. Make our Christmas wish come true. Donate a new toy to the Channel 2 Christmas Wish Toy Drive. From your 24-hour news station, this is a Channel 2 News Update. Good evening, I'm Steve Brown. Here's a brief look at items making news at this hour. The young Florida woman who said she contracted AIDS from her dentist has died. Kimberly Bergalis passed away at about 3 o'clock this morning. While fighting for her life, she testified before Congress, urging all health care workers be tested for the AIDS virus. A memorial service is slated for tomorrow. Kimberly Bergalis dead at age 23. United Nations Envoy Cyrus Vance stepping up efforts to deploy a peacekeeping force in Yugoslavia, that despite sporadic fighting in the breakaway Republic of Croatia. Vance met Serbian officials and federal defense ministers in Belgrade, Yugoslavia, for the second time in three days. Afterwards, Vance said it was difficult to discuss the arrival of UN peacekeeping forces while armed conflicts continued. Parishioners of St. Stephen's Church in Lackawanna holding a spaghetti dinner today to raise money for war-torn Yugoslavia. Most parishioners are of Serbian descent and say their brothers and sisters in Yugoslavia are without food and medical supplies due to the civil war. Among the lucky ones are Gorenka Zelaj Lija. Who... The fighting was very bad and that many of my relatives, many of my friends has been killed. And they, were, they have been killed in the worst way. Some of them were tortured and it was very awful. More on Gorenka's escape and how local Serbian Americans are trying to help war refugees tonight on Nightside at 11. Time now to take a look at the forecast and much warmer than what we've gotten used to here in the wintertime in western New York. Yeah, definitely. Temperatures comfortably mild. We're going to see a few scattered showers. They are definitely possible coming on and off during the week, but all that unseasonably cold temperatures are out of the forecast, at least for now. Let's take a look at the five-day outlook. For tonight, it's going to be cloudy and mild, 60% chance of showers, a low of about 50. Monday, partly sunny and breezy, chance of a few scattered showers, temperature high of 40. For Tuesday, mostly cloudy, and we'll remain in the 40s for Wednesday and Thursday. All right, thank you, and we'll see you at 11. Have you met Herb Grant? Herb Grant, Tacoma. Herb's in the plumbing business. Yeah, I'm all backed up. <laughs> <laughs> Herb, you know these bums? Herb Riddick, Herb Kaplan. Hi! So, the wife and kids are good? Herb Jr.'s almost 12. Whoa, next thing you know, there'll be Herbert Jr. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> if it's out there, it's in here. The 9X Yellow Pages. Why would anyone need another? I think it comes with experience. You look beyond the obvious when doing a story. You've got to be skeptical, but not cynical. That's a very fine line. 
You've got to listen to what people have to tell you, but at the same time, don't accept everything that they tell you. The news business is exciting. There's never a dull moment. You're always where the action is. And you're talking to people. It's the greatest job in the world. He just wants to make people happy. You had sex with the cleaning woman? She was mopping the floor with me. Seinfeld at 9, 8 Central. Yeah. The beginning yours tomorrow under the tree at 7.45. The joy of giving. Then again at 8.12. On Night Court, after Seinfeld, NBC Wednesday. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Nobody knows like Domino's how you like pizza at home. So the Raiders still battling for the division championship, leading the Bills, who have clinched their fourth straight in the AFC East, 20-14. to 14, But Buffalo has incentive, of course, because they want to clinch that home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Our O.J. Simpson is on the sidelines at the Coliseum. Let's get to him for his impressions of the first half. Juice? Well, Bob, I must admit I was uh, real impressed by the Raiders in the first quarter. They came out playing the type of ball I think that they're really suited for. They have a big, strong offensive lineman, hard running backs, and they ran the ball, and they threw very, threw very conservative passes. They accomplished two things by doing that. They kept the Bills' offense off the field, and they limited the responsibility of Schrader. They were using Schrader much like Kansas City uses the Berg, short passes. They got away from that in the second quarter, and I think they sort of lost a little control of the football game now. They're not doing anything the Bills didn't expect. They knew they would try to pound the ball. I expect the Raiders to come out in the third quarter, go back to doing what they did in the first quarter, running on first and second down, throwing the five-yard passes, and you'll see a lot of Nick Bell, I think, in the fourth quarter. All right, let's see what Will thinks. Well, I was talking to Al Davis on Friday, and he said the thing that concerned him about the Buffalo game was that he felt they had a good plan on defense, but they could get hurt on special teams, and they have been. Buffalo ran the kickoff back for a touchdown, ran a punt back to set up their other touchdown. Bill? Well, as well as the Raiders have played, this is not a safe lead against the Buffalo Bills. You know, Kelly can get that offense going pretty quick. It'll be an exciting second half. All right, now, on to other games. Phoenix has a 14-0 lead at home in the third quarter over the Redskins on a pair of Johnny Johnson touchdown runs in the second quarter. The Jets at Detroit, the Lions trying to be perfect at 8-0 for the season at home and to take their record to 10-4 and, and keep pace with Chicago atop the NFC Central, leading at the half, 24-14, two touchdown runs for Barry Sanders, including a 51-yarder. He's got 91 yards rushing at the half. San Francisco leads 10-9 over the Seahawks at the Kingdome there early in the third quarter. Atlanta can move into a first place tie atop the NFC West with the New Orleans Saints if they win and Anaheim looks like they will, leading at the half 24 to 7. Earlier today, Houston clinches the AFC Central, first time in their history they've ever won it outright 31 to 6 over the Steelers. Warren Moon passes 4,000 yards in passing for the second consecutive year. Part of it was this touchdown pass to Haywood Jeffries that covered 16 yards in the third quarter. Alan Pinkett had a 98-yard rushing day, including two touchdowns. One of them was this 11-yarder in the fourth quarter. Later, Al Smith had a 70-yard run with a fumble. They sacked Neil O'Donnell seven times. They win it going away, 31-6. to six. Philadelphia now 9-5 and five with their sixth consecutive win. Very much in good shape for a wild card. Giants all but eliminated now at 7-7. Seven and seven. Eagles win 19-14. Do it without Jim McMahon in the second half. Bruised ribs after he was sacked on that play by Lorenzo Freeman. Phil Simms threw a couple of touchdown passes to Dave Meggett in the first half, including this dump-off 14-yarder, but the Giants did not score in the second half. Jeff Kemp came in, the much-traveled one, in place of McMahon, and scrambling, he manages to throw this touchdown pass to Calvin Williams that brought them to within 14-10. The comeback was on. They led 16-14 in the fourth quarter when Matt Barr hooked a 32-yarder that could have given the Giants the lead. Then Roger Ruzek added a field goal, and the Eagles win it 19-14. And Lawrence Taylor knows it looks bleak. This was, this was the playoffs for us. Every game was a playoff game for us. And uh, I, I can't say enough that I, I did not contribute and I hurt the team. We dug a hole for ourselves. And I think that's allowed us to keep focusing on every game because we really can't lose any. At least that's the way we have to take it. That attitude is making us play so hard and prepare so well that I think we can take it into the playoffs, but the next step at this point is Dallas. 
Okay, the Broncos clinch at least a wild card and continue their battle with the Raiders for the championship in the AFC West. They prevail 17-7 at Cleveland, even though the Browns are 6-8, and eight, they're hanging by a thread, not officially eliminated, playing with the sore shoulder. Elway threw a couple of touchdown passes. Kansas City had to come from behind, and in overtime they win 20-17, alive for a wild card, alive still for the championship in the AFC West as they thwart the upset bid by the San Diego Chargers. Dallas has won three in a row. New Orleans has lost four straight. Dallas wins 23-14. Emmett Smith, 112 yards rushing. Dallas in good wild card shape. New Orleans wants a lock to win the NFC West. Looks like they'll be tied for the top spot in that division with the Falcons, and they have split their two games head-to-head -head this year with Atlanta. Chicago back on the winning track with a 27-13 win at home at Soldier Field over the Packers, and so if the Lions beat the Jets, that tie will remain atop the NFC Central between Detroit and Chicago, and New England had to come from behind trailing 17-3. They eventually catch up on the last play of regulation and win in overtime on Hugh Millen's 45-yard touchdown down pass to Michael Timpson, 23-17 to over the Indianapolis Colts. They allow me now to take a breath as you watch these messages from your local stations. Some men don't know how to be human. Helping others is not my idea of a good time. Till someone forces them to. He has two choices, coaching or jail. Good luck. Hey. Can one special woman turn him around? That's a good thing. Okay. John Larroquette in a rare motion picture performance, one special victory tonight. Has your bank been through a number of changes this year? Have you thought of finding a better alternative? Well, at North Star, we have lots of them. Like our new investor account. The only account that gives you access to money market mutual funds with the convenience of instant ATM access through your checking account. That's the kind of flexibility you need in today's changing market. And the only way to get it is by changing to North Star. Celebrate the holidays with a Christmas carol, Friday at 9 on Channel 2. The Raiders holding to a 20-14 lead over Buffalo as we are at halftime. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. It is interesting, Trump, in the first half, the Bills had more yards on returns than yeah. they did from offense, but Kelly started to get hot. He completed his last eight passes, so we'll see what Buffalo can do on offense in the third quarter. To confirm those numbers, Buffalo had 150 yards in returns and 106 on offense, so this is not the way Buffalo expected to be in this game, but they are. The Raiders are allowing the Buffalo Bills to stay close. Well, uh, Bill, Jim Kelly has, of course, been a player who's brought his team from behind time and again. He is long on courage and daring. He loves the load to be put on his shoulders. We'll watch how some of the scoring went today. Here is Kelly on the rollout. He does a great job here. McKellar is like the second or third receiver. Thurman Thomas was the primary receiver. He comes off of him, and that's their 13th and 14th point. And then this is the opening score of the game. Great job by Tim Brown. You see, he stays with this play, I think, when a lot of receivers will say, hey, I'm covered. You know, Kirby Jackson was all over him. He ends up being a 78-yard pass and run for the Raiders' first touchdown of the day. And this has been a game, a first half of big plays, Don. It became a game of can you top this on the ensuing kickoff. You remember Al Edwards of the Bills ran it back 91 yards. The Bills were right back in it. But at halftime, it's a six-point lead for the Raiders in a game they feel they have to win because the pressure's on them. Denver won today. Kansas City won today. Yeah. Don, if you look at the halftime stats, there's nothing to indicate there that Buffalo is close in this game. Just six first downs. They went into the last drive they had of the half with one, got their next one on penalty, and then made uh, four in that last drive. No turnovers for either team. Time of possession. I mean, again, the Bills' defense been on the field a great deal in this first half. Just 106 total yards, but again, on special teams, on return yardage, the Bills have 150 yards, so they figure out ways to win. Marv Levy, who the assistant coaches say is a great delegator, they call him the chairman of the board, he lets his coaches coach. And Marcia Broda, as innovative an offensive coach as there is, the designer of the no-huddle offense. They have a wealth of plays to call on, and they will. The man to the right, turning away is Walt Corey. Two. The Raiders holding to a 20-14 lead over Buffalo as we are at halftime. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. 
It is interesting, Trump, in the first half, the Bills had more yards on returns yeah. than they did from offense, but Kelly started to get hot. He completed his last eight passes, so we'll see what Buffalo can do on offense in the third quarter. To confirm those numbers, Buffalo had 150 yards in returns and 106 on offense, so this is not the way Buffalo expected to be in this game, but they are. The Raiders are allowing the Buffalo Bills to stay close. Well, with Bill, Jim Kelly has, of course, been a player who's brought his team from behind time and again. He is long on courage and daring. He loves the load to be put on his shoulders. We'll watch how some of the scoring went today. Here is Kelly on the rollout. He does a great job here. McKellar is like the second or third receiver. Thurman Thomas was the primary receiver. He comes off of him, and that's their 13th and 14th point. And then this is the opening score of the game. Great job by Tim Brown. You see, he stays with this play, I think, when a lot of receivers will say, hey, I'm covered. You know, Kirby Jackson was all over him. He ends up being a 78-yard pass and run for the Raiders' first touchdown of the day. And this has been a game, a first half of big plays, Don. It became a game of can you top this on the ensuing kickoff. You remember Al Edwards of the Bills ran it back 91 yards. The Bills were right back in it. But at halftime, it's a six-point lead for the Raiders in the game they feel they have to win because the pressure's on them. Denver won today. Kansas City won today. Yeah. Don, if you look at the halftime stats, there's nothing to indicate there that Buffalo is close in this game. Just six first downs. They went into the last drive they had of the half with one, got their next one on penalty, and then made uh, four in that last drive. No turnovers for either team. Time of possession. I mean, again, the Bills' defense been on the field a great deal in this first half, just 106 total yards. But again, on special teams, on return yardage, the Bills have 150 yards. So they figure out ways to win. Marv Levy, who the assistant coaches say is a great delegator, they call him the chairman of the board. He lets his coaches coach. And Marcia Broda, as innovative an offensive coach as there is, the designer of the no-huddle offense. They have a wealth of plays to call on, and they will. The man to the right turning away is Walt Corey, the defensive coordinator, who feels his team, ranked 26th overall in defense, is maligned unfairly when you lose an all-world player like Bruce Smith for almost 12 games. They lost their nose tackle, Jeff Wright, for nine games. They had other injuries in the defense. He said, look at our record. That's all we're paid to do is to win games. Yeah, and frankly, Don, on the road against the Los Angeles Raiders in the Coliseum, a place that they don't play very well, they got to be happy they're down just 20 to 14. They're in this game. Jager, if he has a shortcoming, it is that he does not kick off deep. This time he does. After kicking some short spinners, it carries into the end zone, but the Bills, ooh, that's Whoa. dangerous. He stayed in. They rule a touchback. Kenneth Davis downs the ball, but perilously close to the goal line and he stepped on net he was live at least from this distance all right Dick Hantak said the ball did not come out of the end zone and the referee is the one back there in the end zone to judge that and see watch that right foot Oof. well he made the right choice <laughs> Kenneth Davis from a big family he has 52 nieces and nephews he said, you know where my playoff money goes at Christmas? Good call by Dick Hantek. And the ball comes out to the 20-yard line as the Bills are set to go on offense. Kelly in the shotgun. He's going to be pitching to start the third quarter. Throwing a catch. As the ball is out to the 27-yard line, Raiders in a deep zone, and McKellers with a drag pattern running underneath it makes the reception. Good for a gain of almost eight yards. Ellison was on the tackle for Los Angeles. Look, they're putting five receivers in the flood pattern. Now they got Thurman Thomas up on the line of scrimmage, Don. Kelly makes the read. Another man underneath. This time it's Andre Reed ahead for the first down. He's to the 37-yard line. Winston Moss tackled him. So Kelly, who started slow, you remember he was one for three for three yards, throwing the ball early on. Now has hit his last ten passes. And they're going with the underneath stuff, being very, very patient here. And off to Thurman Thomas, who had a rather unproductive first half. He only had 51 total yards. This is the NFL total offense leader. And he's on his way to leading the NFL for a third straight year in total offense. The only other player who's done that three straight years is the great Jim Brown. Yeah, but you know, 51 yards of total offense in eight minutes of possession, really not bad. They didn't have the ball that much. Kelly awaits the rush. He's got room to run. Instead, he fires and throws a strike down to the 42-yard line. 
So Kelly throwing off balance. Strong rebound, and now Kelly's going to wave it off Trump. Yeah, Andre Reed was the receiver. Mark Levy is beside himself on the sideline. Let's see if we can pick it up again. Uh, can't tell anything from there. The ball did not bounce on the ground. I can. That's for sure. Terry McDaniel was the man in coverage. See if we can pick it up here. Ooh, I think that's a good call. That is an incomplete pass. And it brings up third down. The Bills need seven. Kelly looks. Out pattern. Man is open, but it's thrown too high for Andre Reed. As Kelly slaps his hands. Upset at having missed an open receiver, so the Bills drive stalls to open the third quarter. And Marv Levy sends his punting team out. Tim Brown is back as Chris Moore, who's from Alabama, is ready to punt the ball. He's punted it well today, as you see. High punt, end over end. Brown moves up on it and fair catches the ball despite room to run. Nobody there to talk to him. We need some help from your friends to decide whether to go back or not. Raiders have the ball when we come back. It didn't happen in Germany, nor in Japan. It happened right here. An all-new car, born of intelligent engineering. The Oldsmobile 88 Royale. You've seen it, now come drive it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Now, get 2.9% APR financing for up to 48 months. This Christmas, Tandy Computers, some of the best-selling PC compatibles in America, are on sale at Radio Shack. Four complete systems with color monitors start at just $599.90. All come with 24 unique home organizer programs. The more powerful RLX system is the perfect home office machine. And with hard drive, it's just $1199.95. The Tandy 1000 family of computers, so easy to use, we guarantee success. Radio Shack, America's technology store. With Domino's Pizza's Season's Greeting Special. Now get a medium pepperoni pizza for just $2.99 with any large pizza at the regular price. We don't make your pizza till you make your call and deliver in 30 minutes or less, guaranteed. Ho, ho! NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. By Radio Shack, America's technology store. Nobody compares. By Hertz, we never forget who made us number one. We're Hertz, we're America's wheels. And by Canon, photographic consultant to the National Football League. Raiders break the huddle now for their first possession of the second half here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Ball position after the fair catch by Tim Brown of the Buffalo punt, the 25-yard line. Mills stumped the run as Roger Craig looks for room to go. No one uses his interference more, but the Bills blasted that out of the way. Daryl Talley was the man who was the first hitter. And we got a report from... Uh, O.J. Simpson that Roger Craig had a hip pointer wouldn't come back in the second half, but one of the game's real tough guys. An incessant trainer. He just never gives up on making himself a better player. He was the last guy to practice on Friday. Spend some time, doesn't he, with Thurman Thomas down in Houston? Yeah, there's a bunch of them to train on the levee down there, run right up and down the hills. They pay the price to be great. Roger Craig, the all-time leading receiver among backs in National Football League history. Now Roger Craig is the runner, and there's not much there for him. He's coming up to hit him. With Shane Conlon, number 58, as we check the Hertz 10-minute ticker. With 12.20 to play in the third quarter. Ball is positioned at the 27-yard line. Phoenix continues to lead the Redskins in the third quarter. 49ers looking more and more like a playoff team as Seattle's playoff hopes are virtually gone with the loss today. Uh, we got Wisniewski uh, slow getting up here. 
moving to the sideline can't really pick up what the problem is. 73 Fitzpatrick will be his replacement. See if we can. Well, it looked like he got kicked in the calf. I think Roger Craig kicked him right in the calf. Although he's holding his knee. Pro Bowl player from Penn State, Steve Wisniewski. Third down now for the Raiders, and they need seven. Schrader with a deep drop. They give him time. He makes the move. He's moving Fernandez on the road. He could go the distance. Dwight Drain to beat. Drain closing in and gets him, but all the way down inside the 15-yard line. 59-yard Raider play. Very soft zone coverage in the middle. Really no help once Fernandez comes inside. Schrader with good time, lots of protection, can wait on Fernandez, and frankly, I'm surprised that Drain catches Fernandez. Fernandez has excellent speed. That's two catches now, 75 yards. Tim Brown is over 100 yards receiving. They've gone through this defensive backfield. The Raiders have pretty efficiently. Now big Nick Bell comes into the backfield for the Raiders as they go first and 10 at the Buffalo 13-yard line. Bell turning it up and turning it down to the 7-yard line. And they're also back to the six offensive linemen set. They got Reggie McElroy again playing tight end. And in the 34 defense, you're really stretching the deep. There's 77. He's on Cornelius Bennett. Bell does a good job of setting up that block by McElroy. Just sucks in Bennett. He's able to turn the corner. Scheduling certainly works against the Raiders. They have a final three games against teams with a composite average of 28 and 11, including today. Next week, they play at New Orleans. Then they come home to play the Chiefs in the final regular season game. Bell drives down to the five-yard line. It was a second and four play, so he's very close, but not quite to the first down marker. Raiders again using a lot of clock, as Big Art Shell likes it. In a previous game, we talked to Art Shell, and I said, do you have a tendency to look over the shoulder of the offensive line coach, having played tackle your entire career? He said, well, it started out, I didn't, but I can't avoid it. I'm always watching the offensive linemen. A soft-spoken gentleman, Archell, but is he in command? Wisniewski has a bruised knee, probably will return. Third down, less than two for the first down, and Bell works his way down close. It looks like he's got four new downs for the Raiders. Shane Conlon, 58, was the first tackler. Again, a decent push and just a slight move by Bell as we've got flags late here. See Nick Bell looking out there at the sideline to see if he picked up the first down or not. Dick Hantak's going to help us here. We have illegal substitution on the offense. Number 77 was on the end of the line. He did not report. Oh, come on. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Third down. Reggie knows on every play with an ineligible number, if you're the end man on the line of scrimmage, you've got to report. There's 77. You've got to tell the defense that an ineligible man is standing on the end of the line as an eligible receiver. That's just... Reggie just lost his head there for a minute. Boy, that hurts. Now the Raiders set up. Third down, and they need six from the 10 yard line. Marcus Allen cutting back. He's down close to a first down, appears to have it. Needed six. He got six and a half, it looks like, before Mark Kelso knocked him down, number 38. They call this the sprint draw, Don. The quarterback goes back to the running back. Watch what happens. Watch the way Schrader goes all the way over to Marcus Allen. And you see Wilkerson, 68, with a good hold on Leonard Smith. We'll call it part of a block. Nice call. Great call by Terry Rubisky. Kelso on the tackle. Close enough to measure for a first down. It's been an interesting year for the Raiders. They have been statistically outscored by their opponents, outrushed by the opposition, outpassed by them. 
have a worse third down conversion percentage than their opponents and yet they have a terrific record having won six of their last seven four in a row a win today would bring them to 10 and 4 on the year and even with Denver atop the AFC West but the Raiders win the first tiebreaker they've beaten the Broncos twice uh, fourth down, already, they're going to go for it. Yeah, they've already gone for it on one fourth down and made it. And again, the spread formation with Marcus Allen is the lone running back, it looks like. Yeah, it is. A lot of times, they like to run left as the Bills send people, and they might have to call a timeout. Six, eight, they ten. got at least 11. They got 11. They like to run, but Wisniewski's out, the left guard. They go to Schrader again, and he's down close to the goal line. He's in. That's the signal. Touchdown, Raiders. Four-yard quarterback draw. Quarterback sneak. Yeah, that's what it was. Not the draw, the sneak. Again, great confidence in the center. Mosbar. Watch the shove. Right behind Mosbar, indeed. Easy. Al Davis sitting there with Jim Otto. Yes. Into the end zone. So at the moment, the Raiders avenging that brutal defeat to the Bills in the AFC Championship game when they're beaten 51 to 3, as the Raiders have now extended their lead to 26 to 14. Don, I think they're reviewing this play. Well, he bounced short of the goal line. Yeah, I think they're looking at his knee. If that score stands, it's seven plays, 75 yards, another four minutes and 44 seconds off the clock. Here it is again. Where does the knee hit? He's not in. He's not there in. has been a reversal. The ball is first and goal to be placed on the two-foot line. They're not in, but they do have it point-blank range with first down. Good push up, up front. There's the elbow down. Uh, that's a good call by Dick Hantak and Royal Cathcart, the replay official. Not in there, but it probably won't be long. There have been no turnovers. Marcus Allen taken down at the three-yard line by Kirby Jackson. Poor left choice. Cornerback. Poor choice by Marcus. One of the rare mistakes I think he makes in running the ball. He knows it, too. He tries to jump outside here. It's an excellent job by the defensive backs. Look at Jackson shed the block by Smith. Yeah. I mean, you, you got a 257-pound fullback named Nick Bell in there. He's standing on the sideline. There's certainly no, nothing wrong with Marcus Allen running it, but three shots at the line of scrimmage from point blank range, I think, is why you draft Nick Bell, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they still have three downs to go. Ball position at the three-yard line. Here's a throw. Incomplete. And a marker comes in late. They're going to call Daryl Talley for interfering with tight end Andrew Glover. So that'll make it a first down. Defense number 56. Foul took place in the end zone. By rule, the ball is placed on the one yard line. First down. Weren't we just here a minute ago on yes, the one yard were. line? Top of the screen is Glover. You see, Daryl Talley's got him all over the place. Got his shirt, got his arm. Yeah, there was no protest from Daryl Talley. Yeah, still no Nick Bell, though. I set. Schrader, nothing. this time gets nothing. So it'll be second. Now here's another marker coming in after the play. Could be offensive holding. That looks like it's a face mask against Buffalo. Yeah, that's what Horton, he's cheering the call. It was the umpire threw it in. And most of the time his penalties are for holding on the offense. Coach Levy seeing his team. Face mask. Defense number 56. 
at the distance to the goal line. Still first down. Daly not having one of his best series here. We're running out of distance here, even on the half distance. That's Raiders line up a foot from the Buffalo goal line. You see the ninth play of the drive. And the ninth play does it. Marcus Allen with the touchdown. His seventh of the year. Or excuse me, just his second of the year. Boy, that took a while, you know. They were down there for a lot of shots. Allen is definitely in the end zone. From behind the defense, you see Shane Conlon coming up there. It's been a tough season for Marcus Allen. He entered this game with only 150 yards rushing for the season. He injured his knee at Houston in an opening day loss and missed eight weeks. Jager, who is points on the board every time he swings that right leg, and he drives another through. It's now a 27 to 14 game, and Jager will kick it off for the Raiders when we come back. Working to be the best they can be. Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. When Buffalo quarterback Jim Kelly needs a tough catch, he turns to Andre Reed. In the five seasons they've played together, Kelly and Reed have combined for well over 300 completions, nearly 5,000 yards, and more than 30 touchdowns. In 1990, both were selected to play in the Pro Bowl. As individuals, each is capable of a big play. Together as teammates, they make the Bills the best they can be. engineering is routinely put to the test at Oldsmobile. And here's the result. Of all the Cutlass Sierras ever sold in the last 10 years, we can say 96% are still on the road. Safely say. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Available now for $12,695 with Air and V6 engine. At Braun, we believe even if you're not at your best in the morning, at least you can look like you are. Braun, the world's number one selling foil shaver. The MetLife blimp that's showing you this shot travels over 50,000 miles a year. It covers sporting events around the country. Snoopy is their co-pilot right on the nose of that ship. Dirigible, if you will. The kickoff by Jager carries into the end zone as he starts to hit it a lot deeper now. And Kenneth Davis has no choice but to uh, down the ball as Jay Schrader has led the Raiders to a 13-point lead. You've been up in the air for hours. Now you've got to make up the time. Aren't you glad Hertz has a faster, easier way to rent a car? Number one club goal. No paperwork, no stopping at counters, nothing to slow you down. You go straight to our gold parking area, where your car is waiting, ready to go. It's our fastest way to rent a car. I'm gonna make it. Call Hertz today for low daily rates on Lincolns with free unlimited mileage. Hertz, we're America's wheels. There's a cologne that the bird men prefer. Preferred stock cologne from the house of Stetson. Smooth and extra special. Preferred stock cologne. What preferred men? What is the image of a rebel? These are the images of a rebel. Canon's autofocus EOS Rebel S with built-in flash. Image is everything. EOS Rebel S from Canon. So advanced, it's simple. Oldsmobile knows that all your roads won't be sunny roads. That's why the all-new Oldsmobile 88 Royale LS offers you advanced traction engineering. The combination of anti-lock brakes, traction control, 
and road-holding front-wheel drive. The three elements to beat the elements. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Now, get 2.9% APR financing for up to 48 months. It's gone. But it isn't. My cough drop's gone, but it's still working. Only new extra-strength Vicks cough drops give you twice the Vicks vapor medicine to relieve your cough and help your scratchy throat and stuffy nose feel better. Even after it's gone. Next Saturday, it's a special afternoon of great NFL action on NBC Sports, beginning at 3.30 Eastern time with NFL Live. And it's a meeting at Candlestick as the Kansas City Chiefs head in to play the Hot 49ers. That's next Saturday on, on NBC, beginning with NFL Live at 3.30 Eastern Time. One of Steve DeBerg's former teams, the Chiefs quarterback. Now Jim Kelly, the load's on him, it is every week, but even more so now with his Bills down 27 to 14 and 85,000 cheering on the Raider defense. And they respond, stopping Thurman Thomas for a little game. Ellison was the tackler. Uh, look at his time of possession. Raiders to Buffalo. That's shocking. Throwing a catch as again McKellar comes underneath. Raiders Trump have shut out James Lofton, their former teammate so far. He cut a ton of balls against him in that AFC championship game, two for a long touchdown. Actually, they've done a great job on both outside receivers. You know, Andre Reid has not had a particularly good day either. It's been the inside guys who are coming up with the football. He's caught two for 18, has Andre Reid. And Lofton is shut out. You're right. McKellar has been the lead receiver, six catches for 34 yards. Third and short. Short yardage play. They take the huddle. Mitch Ferrat is in there as an eligible receiver. Davis breaks it and then some more as he gets across the 35-yard line. Game clock down to 5.55 and running. We're in the third quarter. Great job on the outside. You see Parker, 74, pull out. Arwell Gardner, 35. Eddie Anderson finally makes the tackle. It looked like Winston Moss missed him. Should have made the tackle, but it's a first down. The Raider defense grades number one in the AFC. It looks to strike down on Andre Reed. It does, but about seven yards downfield out to the 45-yard line. Second and three. Tackler was cornerback Terry McDaniel. Andre Le Reed, another of the standout players from small colleges on the Bills team. He played at Quitsdown State. He's been a first-team all-pro receiver. Another throw and a catch. McKellar takes the hard slug from Ellison and from Winston Moss, 99. But he keeps on ticking and gets the ball ahead for a Bills first down. That's a tough basketball player right there. He's caught seven passes today, 29 for the season. Thurman Thomas on a slant run as the Bills fire out off the ball and the carries down to the 42-yard line. Buffalo moving the ball, but somehow they so often seem to be to stall before they can get it in. Don, you know, at this point in the game, they want the defense that they're playing worn out. Well, the defense of the Raiders has not been out there on the field enough to be worn out. Good point. Here's Thurman Thomas. He breaks it. And finally, submarining blockers to get through and make the tackle is Torin Dorn, number 46, and the free safety, Eddie Anderson. The house, Howard Ballard, was out in front. The right guard, Glenn Parker, weighs 325. At least. Weight of Howard Ballard, unknown. <laughs> way unknown. And way up there. But can he play? Kelly on first down. Let's it go deep. McKellar goes for the ball. And Kelly watched the end of that play from flat on his back as McKellar stopped his route from. He'd have had it. Now that's one of the downsides, I think, to the hurry-up offense. As you watch the hit on Jim Kelly, that's Davis right in his face. But when you run the hurry-up offense, your players are going to be fatigued, too. And McKellar looked fatigued at the end of that batter. The hands on hips, breathing through his mouth. Looks like a fighter in about the 12th round, doesn't he? It's not been easy. You see Kelly's numbers. He ranked third in the NFL this week. 
There is a throw and a catch down to the 22-yard line. Al Edwards with a 14-yard gain, and Kelly with a laser-sharp throw right between the numbers. Kerry Lewis is the man in coverage. Excellent pattern. Perfect timing by Jim Kelly. That's an indefensible pass. I mean, when you run on that precise and the ball gets there that quick, that's Edwards' second catch. And, of course, his biggest play was the kickoff return for the touchdown. Mills running the clock now, though. This is their 10th play of the drive. It's a first down play. Kelly against a four-man rush stands in, makes the throw, makes the connection, and Keller, McKellar takes it to the 17-yard line. Eddie Anderson, the free safety, held on to bring him down. Keller taking himself out of the game now. When you have this hurry-up offense, that's one of the rights the player has. All they got to do is look to the sideline. And he'll get a breather. Metzelar is now in. No, yeah, Metzelar is in a tight end. Kelly on second and five, and he's sacked. First of the day. Greg Townsend. His 12th of the season. But the Bills' offensive line has done a great job against this pass rush of the Los Angeles Raiders. This defense is set up for Townsend to get the, the sacks. You see, Howard Ballard really some does sack. a pretty good job. Oh, that's some sack by Greg Townsend. Finally went to the Pro Bowl. He's been one of the best throughout his career. Now his ninth year from TCU. So the Bills have the long way to go now. Third down, they need 14, and there are markers everywhere. Yeah, that's no play. That's going to be on the offense. I think they're going to call this on the offense. Dick Hantak says. Ball start. Offense, number 67. The center. Move the ball prior to the snapping motion. Five yards. Still third down. Watch what Ken Hull does here. He's trying to trick him. Yeah, just that little movement early. Third and 19. Markers are down as Kelly steps in. Here comes the rush. To the end zone it goes. Andre Reed is knocked down off the play and there's no flag. But there was a marker down back up field. If there wasn't interference there, there's no such thing. Gary Lewis was uh, the man in the coverage. It was uncatchable and out of bounds. We got another flag here. Looked like Scott Davis. A legal procedure again against Buffalo. And you said it right earlier. Bills drive down the field, but then stall. They're sending Norwood out, their place kicker, with 2.32 to go in the third quarter. Illegal formation on the offense. Number 69, not on the line of scrimmage. Penley is declined. Fourth down. Bills average almost 30 points a game. The Raiders have scored over 20 only twice this season before today. They lead right now 27 to 14. This Raider team can block a field goal, too, Don. 49-yard attempt. It's on the way. It's wide. No good. And another standing salute for the Raider defense as the Raider offense is set to go to work. Power. Applied intelligently, its effects are magnificent. Witness the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme, powered by the world's largest 24-valve V6 engine and an electronic transmission. It's a car designed to provide a more intelligent standard of performance, measured not simply in miles per hour, but by a slightly different gauge, miles per gallon. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Beautiful. No woman's worth a bullet between the eyes. Depends on whose eyes and which one. Dangerous. What I do with my time and my body is my business. A lethal combination. Blow my head off! Do it! Do it! I believe he was blinded by love. Warren Beatty. What is it with you and Joey? Hey. What is the matter with my Annette Benning. Why'd you come? No, it wasn't caution. Bugsy. Rated R. Starts December 13th in select cities. Opens nationwide December 20th. Thank you. 
There is a sound that you can expect to hear on the new Riviera. It's the sound of German being spoken by those who now converge on Miami's legendary beach. Beck, the number one imported German beer on Ocean Drive in America and the world. No matter what kind of gift or greeting you're sending this holiday season, your postal service offers the perfect way to get it there, in time for the holidays, including Christmas Day delivery of your express mail packages at no extra charge. We deliver, we deliver. It's the reason you trust us. You know that we're going to know where your postal service is. We deliver for you. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey back at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Norwood just missing wide right on a 49-yard field goal try. And so the Buffalo Bills find their defense back on the field. Raiders starting from the 31-yard line. Nick Bell doesn't get much. Coming up to get him was Carlton Bailey, number 54, and Daryl Talley as we look at the Hurts 10-minute ticker. Skins down 14-0 at one point. Have come back to tie Phoenix in the fourth quarter. On it, right now, the Buffalo Bills defense got to be thinking turnover. Of course, Raiders thinking the same thing, so I would certainly imagine they'd be very, very conservative. There's Walt Corey, defensive coordinator. He needs the ball. Back in the hands of the offense with the short field. No turnovers in the game. Marv Levy said the difference the last time we played the Raiders. We forced seven turnovers and didn't turn over. Here's a good ball on the field, but it rolls out of bounds before Leonard Smith can get to it. Cornelius Bennett was there to knock it free from Nick Bell. Lucky break. Watch 97. He just strips the ball. Steve Smith is the guy who's going to block him. Lucky this ball goes out of bounds. Raiders maintain possession at that spot. Oh. Then it, you can see the defense of the Bills now taking a little more chance, getting across that line of scrimmage. They need to get the ball back in the hands of the offense in a hurry. Marcus Allen now comes into the Raiders' backfield. Fumblers are quick to the bench in this league. We saw Koye, Kansas City, one of the best. He fumbled twice one week and played virtually not at all the next. Screen pass and well done to Marcus Allen. He gets some blocks, then gets some yardage on his own. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line, short of a first down. And Raider fans are calling for a late hit. There was an 11-yard game. Yeah, it was Mike Lodish on the ground is Max Montoya, number 65 of the Raiders. He took a knee to the head. Max is a little groggy. I think we can see what happens to Max Montoya here. He's at her on the screen. Uh, he's the guy right here. The first guy that hits him doesn't catch his head, but the next guy does. It looks like it's... Uh, is that Bennett that, that hits his knee uh, on his head? Anyway, Max is slow getting up, wondering what... He made contact with. Here, here's watch 65. Right now, Max is coming off, but he's on Dream Street. Yeah, it is Bennett. This is a terrific football player from UCLA. A critical error by your former team, Trump. Absolutely. One that, they, one that they've yet to recover with. The, the best stat about Max Montoya, last year, he had two penalties and allowed one sack in 980 plays. That's a player. Clifford Hicks is back to get the punt. His last was 59 yards, his return. This one is a fair catch, and the Bills offense will try again from their 28-yard line. The National Football League is concerned about many of the problems that affect our youth. Drugs, malnutrition, and the quality of education that they receive. That's why the NFL, through NFL Charities, has joined other business leaders to support America 2000, a community-based voluntary effort to create a new generation of American schools. Commissioner Paul Tagliabu. The people in our league are local and national leaders who want to see that today's students receive the best possible education. That's why NFL Charities is involved.
The Denver Broncos have worked in partnership with the public sector, private business, and local volunteers to help our children. We have recently been involved with Colorado 2000, a statewide strategy to transform our schools into the best in the world. Improving our nation's schools and educating tomorrow's leaders, that's the task before us. I'm confident that NFL charities can help achieve that goal. This message furnished by the National Football League. Today, NFL Charities announced a $100,000 grant to the fight against paralysis. The recipients of the NFL Charities grant are the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis and the Kent Waldrop Paralysis Foundation. NFL Charities was formed by the NFL teams in 1973 so that the clubs could effectively make grants to worthy national causes. Since then, NFL Charities has made grant commitments of more than $13 million. A dark, overcast day as the afternoon wears on here in Southern California. No lights are on at the Coliseum. It is dark. Our, our cameras do, are able to open their irises and, and really allow more light than, than is here. The advantage you have on the field, of course, is and it, uh, you can see down there it's a little better, but it's overcast here in Los Angeles. And they should put the lights on. Lousy excuse for the team behind, but it's an excuse, huh? down again as the ball is snapped. Andre Reed over the middle takes it to the 36-yard line. Allison was there to hit him along with Winston Moss. There's a lot of open room for short patterns, but once the receiver makes the catch in that Raiders zone, there's another motion penalty called against the Bills. The receiver pays. Oh, Don, uh, throughout this game, uh... Illegal motion, offense, number 80, five-yard penalty, repeat the down, first down. That's on James Lofton, but throughout this game, the incentive for home field advantage in the NFL on the road, just not enough. They win the division last week for the fourth straight year. They're looking for home field advantage, but the Bills have just not been sharp, Don. No, they have not, but there's a lot of time left. We're still in the third quarter as Kelly... Makes a pitch and makes the connection. James Lofton with his first catch. And first down and 15. It's good for an 18-yard gain. Lofton at 35 years old, approaching 1,000 yards receiving this season. A former Los Angeles Raider trains in the offseason in master track meets. That was his 50th catch of the year. And he's averaging over 19 yards a catch. Kelly swept under. He had no one to go to. And that's the second Raider sack of Jim Kelly. Number 70, Scott Davis was the man who got him. Five and a half sacks for this former player for the Illini. Can't hold the Buffalo Center talks about the $10 words that Coach Marv Levy uses. Said he could be making them up for all we know. There's just a lot of head shaking going on. <laughs> Marv's going to have some interesting words about this. <laughs> Ted Marchabroda giving Jim Kelly some advice as the third quarter winds out. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Tonight on NBC, it's the television event of the year. The final network appearance of the Judds. Hot Country Nights, NBC Tonight. When Jonathan made his debut into the Harper family, he arrived without any financial surprises. That's because his mom and dad had their health coverage through independent health. And while traditional health insurance companies will sometimes surprise you by disallowing parts of your medical bills, independent health doesn't work that way. Because we know you don't like surprises. Independent health. Quality coverage you can depend on. A lot of people are deciding that money isn't everything. Time is every bit as valuable. And at Key Bank, we're always looking for ways to save you both. Like giving you longer banking hours or an easier way to check on your balance. Of course, we may only save you five minutes here or ten minutes there. But then, there's no telling how much that time might be worth. Key Bank. America's neighborhood bank. Let's see, we've got the best brands, super selection, and great prices. Of course, we'd also be open seven days a week. And that includes our service department. 
and will offer credit options to meet the customer's personal or business needs. What do you think? Let's go with it. Computer City, best brand, super selection, great prices. Computer City. Join us for our grand opening celebration at the new Computer City. Join Ed and the boys on Sports Extra, Sundays at 11.30, only on Channel 2. 15 minutes to go. A lot of time for the Bills to get back in the game. They need two touchdowns. But while they've started to move the ball rather consistently after the first quarter, invariably their drive stall. Now Jim Kelly sets up. Second down. He needs 12. Time for Kelly. Long ball to McKellar. He has it. Down to the... No, they wave it off. Apparently he lost it on the way down. McKellar says he had it. Well, that was close. Wait a minute. Now, the official's right there saying he had it, I think. Jerry Robinson was right there. Now, they're waving it off. See if we can pick this up. No, it was out. Definitely out. Yeah. Good second look. Our producer today for NBC Sports is Victor Frank. Our director, Richard Klein. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. Coordinating producer of NFL football, John Ferrances. Here's another look. You look at the end of the play, hard to pick up. Is the ball loose? That's stripped away. Great job by Jerry Robinson to this point. L.A. 376 yards offense. Buffalo 197, Don. Audible at the line of scrimmage. Third down, and Kelly needs 12. There's the throw to an open man, Andre Reed. He didn't get there. Cutting back now, the mark is going to be apparently ahead for the first down. The linesman's coming out, marking the ball at the Raiders' 47-yard line. Ronnie Lott was the tackler, so it's ruled that Reed was thrown back, and his forward progress did get him the first down. That's almost inconsequential because at this stage in the ball game, down by 13 points, they're going to go for it on fourth down anyway. And it's hard to review a play when you've got this hurry-up offense. Buffalo goes right back to the line of scrimmage, Don. Another throw to McKellar as Keith McKellar, who's from McNeese State in Louisiana, catching a ton of passes today. That's his ninth, Don. Not for a lot of yards, 53 yards. Still, though, they'd rather... The Raiders would rather have McKellar catch it than Thurman Thomas, and that's the design of the defense. Let him catch it. We don't want it in the hands of Thurman Thomas. And he throws. And Lockton, extending himself, comes down with the ball on a superior play by James Lofton. A 16-yard gain, and with 13.38 to play, the Bills inch closer to the goal line. You can see the zone coverage by the Los Angeles Raiders dropping back deep. That was Lionel Washington reading through the receiver to the quarterback. Another throw and another catch as the ball is thrown to Al Edwards on a sliding play. He gets the ball at the 18-yard line. Ronnie Lott was with him. This drive started at the 29-yard line. And his hurry up has done a good job on this drive, but this is where they've had problems. They've gotten it down here. They can't get it in from the 20. Here's Kelly. Here comes the rush. He fires. He's got a man. One of the plays of the day is Kelly spins away from the tackler and then delivers a tight spiral to all pro Andre Reed. First down, Bills inside the 10-yard line. First and goal. He turns his back to the defense. Got a guy hanging all over him, Anthony Smith, and he still makes the completion for 11 yards. That is an all-pro play. Five catches, 48 yards for Andre Reed. Not been able to get deep yet today. Game clock running. 12 minutes and 35 seconds to play. Bills down by 13. Very tough to call signals as the Raiders on the sideline are waving to the crowd to get the noise level up, and they're responding. Blitz. Seaver went down. Andre Reed says he was knocked down. The official says no. That ball was perilously close to being intercepted. Watch coming right up the middle. Both linebackers. Moss 99 is untouched. But it looked like there was contact. 36 McDaniel was the closest man to Andre Reed. No flag. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. Audible again, Don.
Crowd calls for intentional grounding, but Kelly positioned the ball very close to an eligible receiver. Remember, the rule is if he throws the ball to avoid the sack, you can call the intentional grounding. But Thurman Thomas is just a quarterback two. was ruled in the grass. In the grass. Golick gets a sack. So that's the third of the day. Actually, that's the way they used to call it in the grasp a couple of years ago. This year, they've been a lot more lenient. Open man. Incomplete. Lofton. Penalty marker is thrown. Lionel Washington was the man in coverage. We've got a flag on the field. Andre Reed threw his helmet after the play. I, I, they might wave this flag off, but we'll see. Is that what the call was? Thurman Thomas's helmet is off. be rethinking this if this is going to well, the flag was thrown because Reed threw his helmet that's a disqualification I believe can be it's, it certainly can be but Ronnie Lott not happy there is no foul on the play that's what I thought huh? we waved it, it was not in anger over a call no What was not in anger? Throwing the helmet? Yeah. What is it if you throw your helmet if it's not in anger? What is this, a shot put contest? Bowling? What? Throwing helmets for distance and accuracy. Uh, I see. I understand. Point out the bullseye out there for me. 11.59 to go. The Raiders have not turned the ball over, and the Bills have not sacked Jay Schrader, nor with 0 for 1 today, but it was a 49-yarder. This is a 32-yard attempt. Oh, hit the upright came out. Again, the Bills drive, and again, the Bills come away empty. Honey, look, what comes with this new steak sauce burger combo? Coupons good at Kmart Photo Center, two-for-one prints, discounts on batteries and poster enlargements, too. We got a good thing. Good? This is great, and you need to taste this steak sauce burger. Onion rings, cheese, mmm, you can't beat this. Wanna bet? Get a new steak sauce burger combo and pick up a great photo deal. Go away, right away, at Burger King now. A lot of cars are taking aim at the imports these days. Well, one American car is very much on target. Buick, here's their latest hit, the all-new 1992 Skylark. Completely redesigned with more power and advanced features like standard anti-lock brakes. Skylark for 1992. It's got everything you've been looking for. Plus the one thing only Buick can offer you. Buick Quality. Because you believe these trunks shouldn't carry a spare tire. It's the right beer now. Because up here, crisp tasting beer just comes naturally. It's the right beer now. Because when the whole gang gets together, there's no room for filling up. So reach for the silver bullet, the beer that won't weigh you down. It's the right beer now. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Burger King, where you always get great tasting food your way, right away. By Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. And by the people of UPS, now offering next day air delivery on Saturday. Here's the field goal attempt by Norwood. Buffalo fans saw this last year in the Super Bowl, earlier today, and now another miss by Scott Norwood. The Raiders 
will be looking to run the ball on the clock now with a 27 to 14 lead, 11:54 to play. Marcus Allen behind his interference, and he takes it across the 20 as we go to New York now for an update at NFL Live. Here's Bob Costas. Looks like the Lions will finish the season unbeaten at home. They'll go 8-0. Watch this play. The Jets fumble. Tracy Hayworth picks it up. Goes 28 yards for the touchdown. That widens the Lions' advantage to 34-17 at home in the fourth quarter over the Jets. Back out to the Coliseum. Well, with 11-24 to go, the Raiders have the lead and the ball before 85,000-plus. Raiders looking to go to 10 and 4 on the season and share first place with the Denver Broncos. The Bills will go to 11 and 3 and will have to win their next two games to be sure of the playoffs. Home field advantage. As we look at the starter 10 minute ticker, all the scores. Game clock running, 10.50 to go. Third and two. You mentioned Raiders tied with the Denver Broncos, and the Raiders have two wins over Denver, so they win that, that tiebreaker. Yep. They have one win over Kansas City. They win that tiebreaker, and Kansas City comes here the last game of the season. This is a huge win for the Los Angeles Raiders, Don. Their scheduling is tough, but we're a long way from having this one with 10.24 to play. Raiders with a power set. Double tight ends and high point level. The ball on the field. Bills oh, got oh, has the ball. So the first turner of our goes to the Bills at the 28-yard line. I think it was Daryl Talley that came up with it, Don. I mean, that normally doesn't happen with 10-14 to go in the fourth quarter. See if we can pick up what happened. Never gets the snap. It's kicked around a little bit, and it is Daryl Talley who comes up with the fumble recovery. Goodness. Well, you relax for a minute in this game, and that, that pointed ball bites you. You've got to treat it with respect. The Bills are 20-0, and 0 when Thurman Thomas has rushed for 100 yards. Today, he has just 47 yards running the ball. But they're going to be pitching now. Oh, no, they're not. Here comes Thurman Thomas as the Raiders try to take it right back. Bills have moved the ball in the last two times they've had it, but two missed field goals by Scott Norwood, and the score remains the same. Not a very efficient offense here in the second half by the Bills. Marker down, interception. The ball carried off Lofton and was taken by Ronnie Lott. If the play goes for the Raiders, it'll be his eighth interception. He is the NFL leader, but there's a marker down in the Bills' backfield. Hey, well, what, what do we do here? Did you see anybody tackle Ronnie Lott? Did they make contact with him? I think Lofton did. A guy discarded by the San Francisco 49ers now leads the NFL in interceptions with eight. Tripping on the offense. Penley is declined. Marv Levy not happy, he wants to talk to the official. Lofton lets it get by him. Lot right there. You know, he was not tackled. He was knocked down by his own man. He was not tackled. I think that's what Marv Levy is complaining about. Nobody put him to the ground. They can take it out of his hands and run it in for a touchdown. We asked California artist Ed Lister to give us his impressions of the all-new 1992 Buick Skylark to capture the lyrical lines, the liquid flow, the dash of flair, and above all, the quality that makes this the Buick of its class. Did he capture Skylark? Decide for yourself. But one thing's for certain. Skylark is the Buick that will change a lot of impressions about Buick. If your VCR is a pain to program, then get rid of it and get the one from RCA with VCR Plus built in. To record a show, just look for the VCR Plus code in your TV listing. Then punch it in. It's as simple as that. 
So if you've had it with your old VCR, get rid of it and get the easy-to-use RCA VCR with VCR Plus built in. This holiday season, give him a gift that will help bring you a little closer. The revolutionary Gillette Sensor. The Black & Decker Air Station. It has all the pressure you need to inflate anything fast. The Black & Decker Air Station. Always at your service. Again, we're going to watch the uh, interception by Ronnie Lott. I brought up the point. Was he made, was there contact by Lofton? Yes, you see the right leg. So when Ronnie Lott rolls over, or James Lofton, there is contact, and he is down. Eighth interception. What a player. Only great. Maybe the only player that has been a first-team All-Pro player as both a cornerback and a safety. Did that in those championship years with the 49ers. 9.42 to play. Raiders with a 13-point lead and they go to the power game. His rookie Nick Bell, all 255 pounds of him, takes the ball to the 20-yard line. Tackled by Shane Conlon to the Bills with a golden opportunity. And they cough it right up. This has been a this has been a game of opportunities for missed opportunities for Buffalo, Don. Second down and seven, he gets out to the 25-yard line. Tonight, primetime begins with Erie, Indiana at 7, 6 Central on NBC. And don't miss TV's funniest family, the Torkelsons, at 7.30, 6.30 Central. Then it's the television event of the year when the Judds make their final network appearance on Hot Country Nights, taped prior to their recent pay-per-view concert. Plus Willie Nelson, Alan Jackson, and Eddie Rabbit. Say goodbye to the Judds on Hot Country Nights, followed by an NBC world premiere movie that'll touch your heart. Night Court's John Larroquette stars in one special victory. That's tonight on NBC. Third and short. Trader goes to the big guy. And Nick Bell gets to the 31-yard line. I don't think he got it. It doesn't look like it. He'll be about a yard short. Bills are sending their return unit out. Uh, if you're the Bills now, you certainly got to be think about, thinking about blocking the punt. You need the short field for the offense. Archell not happy that they couldn't convert that third and short. Buffalo still, they're still in there plugging. Bennett makes the tackle. Uh, I think Buffalo would be all over this punt. They want to be very careful not to jump offside to give the Raiders a first down. A uh, punt downfield by Gossett. Here comes Clifford Hicks. He's had a big day. This time the Raiders shut him down. Cut off the angles and take him under at the 33-yard line. you forget how much you like to win and remember how much you love to play they're the new sport casuals from Reebok and they're at Foot Locker where it all begins you'd rather walk than drive an American car you think no American car can match the quality of an import you figure if it isn't foreign it isn't for you you wouldn't give an American car the time of day 
Well, in case you haven't noticed, times have changed. Introducing the new Skylark. This is the Buick that's going to change a lot of impressions about Buick. I think they'll have shampoo there. We might not have head and shoulders. We're only going to be gone a week. Right, a week. Head and shoulders helps take care of the condition that causes flakes every day. Because you never know. You know? Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Raiders continue to lead by 13 points. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy, an enormously important game for the Raiders. Should they win it, and the Bills and the Raiders finish with the same record, and should they go to the AFC Championship game again, be here. Not in a Western. Older ball game. Yeah, not in Western New York where Buffalo likes it. But look, as we said earlier, Don, winning the division last week, just in my estimation, took the edge off the Bills. There is no way against a team like the Raiders on the road you can come out here and play with the same intensity. Bills can be assured the home field by winning their next two. And the throw goes to Thurman Thomas out to the 42-yard line. And you know next week it'll be the Indianapolis Colts playoff game. They're about as far from the playoffs as you can get. Could pick first in the draft. There's a marker down, but the Colts will be pumped to play the Bills, hoping to knock them out of home field. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, defense, number 70. 15 yards, first down. Well, that's Scott Davis. We don't need any of that. At the end of the play, Davis comes from the far side. And he, well, I don't know that. I thought he treated him with a little respect there. He didn't just throw him down. Nevertheless, the penalty. on a first down catch is ahead for almost 10 yards and he gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 655 to play now Don you were mentioning earlier how dark it is they must have heard you they turned the lights on lights are on and the Raiders are running running up the score earlier they hold to a 27 14 lead as the Bills look for the deep throw here's Kelly with receivers releasing deep long ball not close Lofton turned out, and Kelly threw a fly. Bills a victor over the New York Jets last week. They won their first five games, did the Bills. Then lost badly at Kansas City. Marty Schottenheimer told us the one thing he found in watching the Bills offense and charting it, of the 160 passes Kelly threw prior to that game, only 20 of them were over 12 yards in length. He said the no huddle is a short pass offense. They stopped it. Another short pass, but it's good for a first down and a third and one play. Yeah, you know, Don, the other thing is uh, that's McKellar's 10th catch of the day, Don. The other thing is this is a, with all the hurry up, it disguises a great rushing offense. The best there is in the National Football League. So they disguised a lot of things. Kelly, not even in the general vicinity of his receiver. Well, I'll tell you what, Andre on Reed. The same page here, these receivers and Kelly. Andre Reed was wide open at the bottom of the of, of the field. Long near side of the outs, field. And this guy's throwing flies. Yeah. Andre Reed ran the near side pattern. He was wide open. The defensive back fell down. Kelly went to the other side. the re intended receiver Gary Lewis was with him and again Kelly comes in high so he's not lacking arm strength in fact he might have too much of it uh, Edwards makes an honest attempt but well, that was a deep pattern that was a very deep pattern good pass protection it's just not there the edge is just not there Don Kelly now 25 completions 39 throws for 215 yards here's an open man and the play is made at the 12-yard line. It's a first down for the Bills with 5.50 to play, an 18-yard gain. Uh, Lofton's got to be very close to 1,000 yards now for the season. This is the number one offense in the NFL, down by 13. With that much time, they're not gone. 
Oh, dropped by Edwards. It'll be second down and 10 at the 12-yard line of the Raiders. Well, the Bills have come so close in a lot of instances today that there have been some receivers missed and missed badly, but look how close this one is. If he catches this ball, he scores. Not one of Jim Kelly's best performances this year. But not over yet. Kelly with a throw, and Andre Reed is down to the two-yard line. He looks to be just short of a first down. Terry McDaniel on the coverage. Nice pick run by Buffalo. Reed slow getting up. Watch what happens. Watch the pick. It's not 46 on the inside. Oren Dorn picked off by the inside receiver, and the trainers are coming out to see what's wrong with Andre Reed. He looks all right. The Raiders free safety Eddie Anderson has gone out of the game with a hamstring injury. He'll not return as one of the best. There's Eddie Anderson. One of the very best Andre Reed being attended to. Did he fall in the ball Trump that'll knock no, out. I, I can't tell what he did. He got. A thousand fifteen yards at thirty five years old. The oldest receiver in the NFL to ever go over a thousand yards. This guy is in magnificent shape. He, Andre Reed, I think it looks all right. Lipping slightly on his left ankle. Game clock with five seventeen to play. The Bills down by 13 points, but now they are sending a whole array of offensive players with third down and two coming up for the first down, third down and four for the touchdown. They got the big people in there, Don. Garner is the up back. First down Buffalo down to the one yard line. Allison makes the stop on Kenneth Davis. Metzelars goes in motion. The defense kind of looks outside a little bit. Nice pull by Parker 74. He kicks out the defensive back. They're staying with the big people too here Don. Archell talking to us about Kelly he said he's a guy like John Elway. He believes he'll make something happen. Right now it is Kenneth Davis down to the goal line and not in and precious time ticks away on Buffalo for 30 to play. Yeah there's a guy they said wouldn't be back in the game. Yeah. Eddie Anderson. <laughs> He's out of play. That pulled hamstring is all right I guess in the end zone. Davis goes up Anderson hits him. It looks like he's got that ball in the painted part of the end zone. Let's see if we can pick this out again. He falls down on top of Winston Moss 99. But Touchdown. With 4.06 to play, the Bills move back into the ball game. Down 27 to 20 with the all-important extra point coming up. Should they be able to stop the Raiders and take it over, they could conceivably win with a touchdown and an extra point. But the Raiders will have a lot to say about that. Kenneth Davis third touchdown. Gardner does a good job of getting a shove in there. He's obviously broken the plane. Well, it, for all the miscues that the Buffalo Bills have had today, well, they, they got 4:06 to go, and they're still right in it. play drive 67 yards oh he missed it he missed it he might not be kicking next week he might now might not be on the plane going back to Buffalo Brad Del Rizzo is looking awful good now for the Buffalo Bills so the best the Bills can hope for now is a touchdown an extra point and it won't be Norwood in all probability trying it oh and try to go to overtime if they can get the ball back. You want to be fair, but that could be a career ender for Scott Norwood at Buffalo. Well put. Parker goes over to him, 74. A 
kicker who misses an extra point in a crucial game is a lonely guy. Talks to special teams coach Bruce DeHaven. He, I guess when it goes wrong, you don't know why it went wrong. I know Jeff Jager talking to him, Trump, as we look at the starter 10-minute ticker. Jeff Jager's having such a sensational year, said the best advice he ever got was from the Raider Hall of Famer George Blanda. Jager said, I used to get so tight if I'd miss a field goal, feeling I had to make the next 10. Said Blanda told me, he said, what you do is you go out, you concentrate, you line up, and you swing your leg. If it goes through, that's what they're paying you for. If you miss, so does everybody else. You'll get another chance very soon. And he said, it really took the pressure off me with that thinking. Seattle's now gone in front of the 49ers. Norwood had been hot. He'd had some trouble early in the season. Missed five of his first ten. And he hit nine in a row. But he's... he's Bills special teams get him. There's markers down, though, where the Bills lined up to kick off. They were offside on the kickoff. Marcus Allen was back there returning that kickoff. He gets up limp. He gets up limping badly. Marcus Allen was back there on that kickoff, Don. Offside on the kicking team, number 87. Five-yard penalty with a re-kick. Boy, what an expensive choice to put him back there. That's the knee hurt in the first game of the season. It hasn't been 100% well, he told us Friday. See if we can pick something up. Boy, something, something just gave way. I don't think anybody on the Raiders' sideline realized he had done something. It was Jamie Holland who ran it back, and Marcus Allen was in to block. Well, he's also an up back in case it was a short kick. They had a partial hands team in there, skill position players in case the Bills yeah, there, had there, side. There's Holland. There's 32 making the block. Did somebody hit him? Jamie Holland ran the kickoff back. Yeah. Marcus Allen was a blocker. I, I could not see anything happen to him. Ready to kick off for the Bills. Boy puts a charge into that. That'll be tough to handle. They do, though. Napoleon McCallum from the Naval Academy breaks it out to the 32 34 yard line. Coming up next Saturday on NFL Live, OJ and Bill Walsh visit the 49ers training camp. For a look at the state of the team that dominated the 80s. And then the 49ers who've just fallen behind Seattle today up at the Kingdom in Seattle go against the Kansas City Chiefs who rallied to beat San Diego as the Chiefs up their record to 9-5. and five. They were in a tailspin, came out of it last week at Seattle and rallied to win today. The AFC West, one of the premier divisions again, almost assured of sending three teams to the playoffs again, Trump. Denver 10 and 4. The Raiders with the lead and 346 to go will be 10 and 4 if they hold on. But the Buffalo defense will be hunting the ball. Cornelius Bennett. And Buffalo with three timeouts very smartly stops the clock. This is a 40 second timeout. Remember our what you would call it? We're here. Oh, check it out. Great. Bye. How about that thingamajig? And that doohickey? Wow. At Lake, you know who. Bring the fish. I caught this one. Yeah. Uh, with the what's her names? You'll never forget your big moments with the new UC1. Nice catch, Dad. It's the smallest, slimmest Canon 8 millimeter camcorder yet. Oh, hi, Dad. Why don't you call the who's a what's it? The Canon UC1. UC1, we want one. Marv Levy and his AFC champion Buffalo Bills up against it. They've beaten the Raiders the last three times they've played. And those three wins were all at Rich Stadium in Orchard Park, New York. 
Now, with some misses, an interesting point you brought up, Trump, about seven points missed by the place kicker, although one was from 49-yard field goal that was just wide. Still, though, it was long enough. It was wide. Raiders holding to that lead. Now have second down coming up, and they need 13. Nick Bell. Bills get him. He got back a couple of yards. Game clock running, running down to 3.27 to play. Uh, look, this, to this time, uh, Buffalo's choice not to call the timeout with... Uh, it's uh, third down and 11 now. The, the two-minute drill at the end of a half or a game, certainly when you're behind, is not a two-minute drill at all. It's really like three or three and a half minutes. Raiders have gone to a power game today. Our NBC statistician Ross Schneiderman pointing out Raiders have run the ball 42 times, have passed to just 19. Those are the numbers they had last year. And look at this play. Shooting the gap was number 46, the strong safety, Leonard Smith. And now the Bills call a timeout with 2.47 to play, and the Raiders send out their putter with the Bills down by seven. Looks like it's going down to the gun. A mistake was made. Okay, we forgot. We overlooked it. Say you need something said overnight. There are a few companies you can call. But say you need it Saturday morning, guaranteed. There are two. But only one is so efficient. Bobby, just give me a couple of minutes. They get it there on time for far less. Which is why to some, right. there is only one. UPS. Walt Corey and his defense have stood tall on a most important series of downs, stopping the Raiders on three straight. And now the Raiders send in their outstanding putter, Jeff Gossett. Al Davis, he knows. You've seen so many, as Al puts it. They're all close in this league. Or so it seems. Here's a punt downfield to Clifford Hicks. A lot of room to run it back. When you dance, you're gone. That much room, he could have gotten more just sprinting straight ahead. Well, but with the with the pat with the punt rush, Don, there's not a lot of guys back there to block for you. So he, he didn't do a bad job. Next Sunday, NBC Sports presents more exciting NFL action, beginning at 12:30 Eastern time with NFL Live. Then some of you will see the Houston Oilers run and shoot their way into the playoffs. They travel to Cleveland to take on the Browns. The Oilers, the new champions of the NFC Central. Others will see one of these matchups, all with playoff implications. New England at the Jets, Seattle at Atlanta, Miami at San Diego, a regional action. Check your local listings for the game in your area as there's a Raider down now. Looks like A.J. Jimerson, yeah. backup linebacker. He was on the punt coverage team. That last drive by the Los Angeles Raiders, one minute and 30 seconds of possession. So the Buffalo defense did an excellent job, giving the offense 2.36 to go here in the game, down by seven. While A.J. is tended to by Doc Rosenfeld, we'll take a look at the 10-minute ticker. Redskins down 14-0, come back to win. There's a Super Bowl team. It would seem San Francisco is now rally. They lead Seattle and Atlanta over the Los Angeles Rams. And that means that the defending Super Bowl champions, the Giants, are history from a playoff standpoint. A.J. Jimerson helped off. Well, for what little Buffalo has gotten done offensively to be in this spot, is remarkable. First half, they had more return yardage than they did offensive yardage. Here's what it's all about, though. Why the Bills play Jim Page in Kelly Millions, and he's well worth it. A throw and a catch, and the drive could be on as he goes to Thurman Thomas. First down, Buffalo, out to the 48-yard line. Game clock down to 226 to play. Bills down by seven. Throwing a catch. Thurman Thomas is on the run. Dancing and driving and down to the 38-yard line. This is good for 15 yards. Now, the reason this is working now to Thurman Thomas is that the Raiders' choice defensively is a four-man front, one linebacker, and six defensive backs. Thomas has been open. 
Two minutes to go when we come back. Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes, 1986. The Jets send the game into overtime with a touchdown on the final play of regulation. As soon as we won the coin toss, I knew we were going to score. Everything was going our way at that point. Hope Ryan's back to throw. Hope Ryan's throwing long down the sideline for Walker. And he got it. He's got it. Touchdown. The Jets are going to start. They're bombing Wesley Walker in the end zone. Recycling aluminum beverage cans can help save money. Since they're worth more at recycling centers than at curbside pickup. Save energy. Since they have more recycled content. They save landfill space, since more than 63% of all aluminum cans made are recycled. Yes, recycling aluminum cans saves more of a lot of things, which helps save one more thing. Aluminum beverage cans. Why in the world would you buy anything else? Buick introduces the new Supercharged Ultra for 1992. With 20% more power. 5 horsepower to be exact, Ultra truly ranks among the world's finest luxury performance sedans. The new 1992 Supercharged Ultra from Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Stop by KFC for our holiday deals. For just $9.99, try a meal for four, a variety bucket, or a bucket of 36 hot wings. These make great stocking stuffers. The KFC Holiday Deals. Get them in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. How many times has Big Art Shell been on the playing field as a Raider? 15 years. is one of the best tackles in the history of the game. And the Raiders turned it right around the day they named him head coach. Now he finds his team up against it. The number one offense in the NFL moving the ball with the Raiders holding a seven-point lead. A blitz. Kelly releases. Man's open. Incomplete at the five-yard line as they went to Andre Reid and Terry McDaniel with that big burst of speed came back to make the ground up and cover. There was pressure on Jim Kelly. Don Ellison, the linebacker, coming. Raiders taking a chance defensively. That was Jim Kelly's 46th pass attempt of the day. A high for the season. Kelly's still alive. Here's a penalty marker, though. He throws, oh. and Thurman Thomas catches the ball. Oh. Might be holding, though. At least Scott Davis of the Raiders is signaling that, but he doesn't count. Holding it is. Scott Davis was right. That was a 16-yard pickup on a brilliant catch by Thurman Thomas. And by the way, the Raiders have gone back to the 4-2-5. They're doubling Thurman Thomas again. Number 69, 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Second down. That's on Will Wolford. See if we can pick it up on the right-hand side. Yeah. You see, Wolford just takes down Davis. Second down, but it's now forever. Second and 20 or so it would seem forever. Kelly gets time. Let's her go long. James Lofton can't get to the ball. As Kelly, with a flick of the wrist, sends it 65 yards downfield. He also, you saw him raise his hand. He's taking himself out of the game. Uh, there was nobody to go to here. This is two down area, so Jim Kelly makes sure that it's not intercepted. Takes a chance with James Lofton. And look at here. The Bills offense is ready at the line of scrimmage. Steve Tasker comes in. You know he's going to be single covered. Kelly's taking a look at him. Third down. They need 20. He throws, Thurman Thomas will dance, and he cuts inside, and Thurman Thomas inside the 30, and very close to a first down. He got 18 yards on a third and 20 play. They got one timeout left. They ought to use it here. They do. Yep. Sixty-three-year-old Marv Levy, the age fast and he's. 
Pressure will be on the Bills. The Bills, if they lose, will still have a one-game lead in that all-important competition for the home field. Bill Polian, their general manager, feels that the teams that could give the Bills the most trouble in Buffalo are definitely Kansas City team that can play and comes from cold weather that time of year and also the Raiders he only said the Raiders are cold proof because they can run the ball so well well I, that may be true but with with Marcus Allen limping on the sidelines I don't like it as you look at the uh, where the AFC sits right now they got Denver is up there but the Raiders have all tiebreakers against the Denver Broncos, so at 10 and 4, the Raiders would be the division champion, and Denver would be the wild card. Fourth and two feet. Fourth down, and if the Bills don't convert here, it's over. They convert. Not done. Is the great Andre Reid inside the 10 and out of bounds at the 8 yard line? Wow. Fabulous. 20 yards. They would have settled for a yard and a half. Andre Reed turns it into a monster play. Gary Lewis, 36 out. McDaniel is the man in coverage. He and Lott knock each other off the tackle. Again, he picks up the first down and he gets out of bounds. Andre Reed's seventh catch. Now the Bills have it first and goal. Down by seven. 108 to play. A throw and ball is separated from McKellar by that master separator Ronnie Lott the tiebreaker <laughs> there's Scott Norwood on the sideline if he makes that extra point this touchdown that they're driving for is a game winning touchdown Doran Doran all over McKellar and Ronnie Lott times there it seems like there's like four 42s out there don't they yeah, it really a plan B 49ers didn't protect him, and he came back to Los Angeles where he started as a collision at USC. Here's the throw. Touchdown, Buffalo. Oh. James Lofton with a minute to go. They pay him millions, and he's worth all of it. Jim Kelly and James Lofton, who was quiet through the first half, and now we have the all-important point after, and is, is Del Weasel. Is that Del Weasel Trump coming out? No, it's Norwood. It's Norwood. All right, they're going with Scott. Boy, can this kick erase some memories. This would be for the game winner had he made his last extra point try. This crowd's not giving him any help. Oh, he just made, just it. made it. A minute to go, and it's 27 all. And we could be playing football for some time to come. Just like we like it. Let's Kirby. hope it does not come down to a kick. You see Lofton on the outside. 48 Washington in coverage. Lofton does not give up. Ball perfectly thrown by Jim Kelly. Absolutely sensational. Eight plays, 64 yards, a minute and 36 seconds. Perfectly thrown. Boy, this is th this team has got some drama in it, doesn't it? They don't give up. And, and and looking back on this game, score tied. If it does go into overtime, time or they win, they played poorly. Oh yeah. And at some point, the Raiders have to say, "Look, this is a better team than we are." And that uh, that extra point was good by maybe less than a foot. I mean, it was almost wide left. Yeah. Inflated Again. to 13 pounds. As opposed to 12, or 14 pounds, as opposed to 13, it hits the upright and bounces out. Then there'd be something drive-by on the Buffalo Bills bench. <laughs> now they're ready to kick it off by the Buffalo Bills. Brad Del Weasel ready to hit it downfield as Jamie Holland and Napoleon McCallum go back. A strained knee. We don't know how much longer that will keep Marcus Allen out but he doesn't appear ready to play again today you remember he was in on the last kickoff return to block now Weasel booms the ball downfield and here comes Jamie Holland a burner from Ohio State but the Bills with good special teams play led by the pro bowler Tasker who made the tackle 
Stop the Raiders inside their 25, and now they'll be pitching, trying to get in Jeff Jager range, and there isn't a better kicker in the AFC right now. You think so? Well, I'm not so sure. I throw this ball. Well, if you, I tell you, if you flip a coin, you go with a tie, and the Buffalo gets the ball. They've scored their last two possessions. Could be lights out. You've got to try to get in field goal range. 55 seconds. I don't know. This is a tough choice. Bills with no timeouts. If they should somehow get it back in an interception. Schrader has three wide receivers in the game. And he does go to the run. Nick Bell doesn't get much as he's hit hard at the 25-yard line. And 85,000 people boo the play call. But apparently, Trump, the Raiders are going to... I think, I think Archell is correct. I mean, take your chance that they they have a system in the second in the first quarter they ran the ball very well against this Buffalo defense. You take one shot at it at the end of the game. Now they go long. It could be a pick. Intercepted by Clifford Hicks. He's back inside the 50. Still on his feet. He beats one man. Clifford Hicks is inside the 30. 18 seconds to play. He is inside the 15-yard line, and Buffalo has the ball at the Raider 13-yard line with 15 seconds to play. Nate Odoms is the man who made the pick. 37, Hicks is 27, he was back with him, but it's Nate Odoms who makes the play. And this Buffalo team has got nine lives. Goodness. That's just the third pass attempt that Schrader has made in the second half. It's picked off. And they got a kick right now, they can't afford to do anything with no timeouts. Wait a minute, Del Weasel is on the field here to kick. No, I think it's Norwood again. It's Norwood. Is it? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. The Bills cannot it risk. It is. Bills cannot risk running a play because they have no timeouts. We still could go to overtime yeah. with Norwood kicking. You know, all the kicks today that he's missed, except for the extra point, have been on the right hash. This one is on the left hash. And the last extra point which he made was just inside on the left side. He's 0 for 2. And a missed extra point. This is a 30-yard attempt. And man, have the Raiders allowed the Buffalo Bills back in this game? Schrader's only interception could produce the game winner. This is the kind of effort that propels a team to the Super Bowl if they can win when they play poorly. Coach Marv Levy, who is schooled in special teams play, he was part of a Super Bowl coaching staff with George Allen at Washington when they went to the Super Bowl in 72. He beaten by the Dolphins 14-7. He was the special team coach then. Frank Reich is the holder and a good one. The Raiders have blocked some kicks, Don. Yes, they have. Scott Davis has been the man who's been best at it. Field goal attempt. They would give the Bills the lead with now the penalty markers down. Side judge runs in, or the head linesman. Ball start. Offense center moves the ball. Five yard penalty. Kent Hull is a Pro Bowl player, but not having a Pro Bowl day. Wow. I think this all started when uh, the Buffalo Bills charter, the company they normally charter for, went out of business this week. They had to find another plane in two days. But he's got a chance to redeem himself here. Be a 36-yarder. Norwood can kick it from a lot farther than that. Distance is no problem. Accuracy will decide this.
So the Raiders have renewed hope with 11 seconds to go. It is almost definite we're going to overtime. Scott Norwood as perplexed as anybody in the ball yard trying to figure out why. His worst day as a professional, but the Bills are still in it. We welcome those of you who have been watching the Jets and the Lions. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. The Bills, after an interception by Nate Odoms, have just missed a field goal drive from 36 yards out that would have given them the victory. The Lions a victor over the Jets today. And now Art Shell brings his team over as they'll regroup and get set for the coin toss as we're going to overtime. The game tied 27 all. The Jets going to 7-7, seven and seven, so their playoff chance is about gone. The Lions, the final opponent for the Buffalo Bills on December 22nd at Orchard Park, New York. They become a 10-14. Yeah, well, in, in this game right here, Don, big advantage Raiders because of the kicker. I mean, the Buffalo Bills have to feel like they got to get it to the 10-yard line or in the end zone to win this game because of the 10 points Norwood's missed. And in the case of the... Buffalo, it's your choice. This is heads. This is tails. Will you call while the coin is in the air, please? Tails. Tails is the call. Head is a head. Yeah! Raiders got the ball to start the overtime, and we come back. Bills, the visiting team, got the call, but the flip went the Raiders' way. We'll be back with overtime after these messages from your local station. Monday, the Fresh Prince goes Las Vegas. Yeah! And the guy's on a roll. Well, who's hotter than Madonna in a pointy bra? Yeah! Just check. All new NBC Monday. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. The death scene from Lear. Next. <laughs> Thank you. If it's out there, it's in here. The 9X Yellow Pages. Why would anyone need another? The art of listening is very important. You have to listen. If you don't listen, you're going to miss part of the story. Come on, come on, come on, get up! Television. Or Telecaster. Black light or Carlsberg light. This night has a different light. The Buffalo Zoo lights up for Zoom and Essence now through December 29th. We're heading to overtime at the Los Angeles Coliseum where the Bills have rallied from 13 points down in the second half with two fourth quarter touchdowns to tie the game. But they also have been victimized by their place kicker missing three field goals and an extra point that would have been a game winner. And he, as we look now at a 10 minute ticker that will include all the scores of the competition today in the National Football League. San Francisco has held on, rallying back and forth at Seattle, and has beaten the Seahawks 24-22. Next Saturday on NBC Sports, you'll see Kansas City a come from behind winner today over San Diego, go against the 49ers at Candlestick Park with NFL Live beginning at 3.30 Eastern Time. Right, what's going on today? We've got three overtime games, two finished, and this one about to begin. Percentages are usually with, as you know, Trump, the team that wins the toss and gets the ball. As Scott Norwood, who had that field goal just veer a bit right, a field goal that would have won a Super Bowl, having a worse day today. Bills are 5-0 in games. They lost the coin toss in overtime. Maybe this is like they like it. Maybe so. Uh, today, as opposed to Norwood, he's Norwooden. <laughs> Three missed field goals and an extra point. Norwood 
Brighton indeed. Napoleon McCallum is back now for the Raiders along with Jamie Holland. Brad Del Wiso, the designated kickoff man for the Bills. He's not tried any field goals. That may change. You can't believe it won't. Booms into the end zone and Jamie Holland downs the ball for a touchback. And the Raiders go first and ten to start overtime at their 20. The Raiders have already been in an overtime game this year. They beat Seattle. Yeah, they were down 23 to nothing at Seattle, I think. And 20 to nothing came back and won. Yeah. Bills have not had an overtime game. Always tough for coaches to decide in this overtime period what you want to do. I mean, Jay Schrader in the second half has thrown the ball very little. His last throw was picked off by Nate Odoms, run back in field goal position. And then a Norwood miss. Now the Raiders get another chance, but they have the long field to go, starting at their 20-yard line. Schrader coming off a three-interception game last uh, Sunday at San Diego. Has thrown just one today. He's also only got three pass attempts in the second half, Don. Three. See if there was movement in the Raider offensive line. I think Dick Handek, Hantek just said false start. False start. Offense number 65. Prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Max Montoya, you know, the last six drives the Raiders have had. Three plays and out. Raiders have been in a world of close games this season. Buffalo only in two with that number one offense. Now the Raiders have to go first down and 15. Schrader again back at the 13 yard line. First sack of the day as Bruce Smith comes crashing through. Jeff Wright was also there. You can see Schrader being very very careful with that football. He pumped about four times and then pulled it down. And this Coliseum is quiet other than the booze. And Bruce Smith comes from the outside on Wilkerson. He's there. Jeff Wright's already got him. Bruce Smith gets everybody. He got all four of them, including his own guy. <laughs> if in doubt, get them all. Second down and 17 for the Raiders in this tie game in overtime. 27 off. Schrader airs it out deep. Tim Brown going for the ball. Picked off by Mark Kelso. It's a clean interception by Mark Kelso, the free safety at the 36-yard line of the Bills. So Schrader playing error-free ball through almost 60 minutes of play. Now his last two passes intercepted. Kelso came from 40 yards away to make this interception. Goodness. Since the first half now, Jay Schrader is 0 for 4 throwing with two interceptions. And the Bills have the ball back. Look at that. This game, first half to second half, is totally turned for the Buffalo Bills. There's the resident choir boy of the NFL, Mark Kelso. Jim Kelly sets his team. Here's a blitz. Kelly releases against the blitz. Andre Reed comes down with the ball. There are penalty markers down. And Reed limps off. He's had problems with an ankle or knee as the game is worn on. How did he catch that? Oh, no. Kelly put it there and it's stuck. Yeah, I think this is against the defense. Jerry Robinson pulled down Keith McKellar, it looked like. That's a 30 yard pickup if the reception stands. It's going to be interesting now, Trump, to see if the Bills just run their offense and try to run it right into the end zone. They have to. And not try a field goal. You can't put the ball on, you can't put the game on Norwood's foot. There's Andre Reed on the sideline being looked at by several people. Thirty one yard pass play. As the Bills are in long field goal range, but maybe there's no such thing today for the Bills. As they have fought back one of the most spirited efforts in the history of this franchise. Coming from a 
way down. Place kicker missing field goals, missed three, missing an extra point that would have been a game winner. Still, they keep coming back to try again. You know, there comes a point where you owe your team more than another chance for a guy that's just having a bad day. Uh, the, the kicker doesn't even want to take the field. I mean, he didn't want the next kick on his foot. Scared to death of it. The missed extra point, though, was what really hurt because that would have given the Bills a 28-27 lead and ultimately the win. I've not heard anything from Dick Hantak. Don't know what the situation is here. Please help us. There is no foul on the defense. The defensive player ran on the field prior to the snap. However, he is not restricted to be inside of the numbers. That rule only applies to the offense. We have first down Buffalo. Makes sense to me. I'll take his word for it. Whatever's fair. How did he make this catch? What concentration. McDaniel 36 right there with Andre Reed. That's Kelly's 56th attempt. 32 completions. All highs for this season. First down from the 34-yard line. Thurman Thomas with a blocker in front. And Thomas, the NFL's leading rusher, weaves his way down inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. Time of no concern now as we're in overtime. 13.43 to play in it. As you know, in the regular season, if they're still tied at the end of a 15-minute overtime period, it counts as a half-game one and a half-game loss for each team. Look at this. They continue with the hurry-up offense in overtime. Amazing. It ain't bad, right? It's been in the yeah. zone the last two times. It's working. Field goal drive. Back to the run on second down and four. They take it down to the 25-yard line. It would be a 40-yard field goal, 50-yard field goal from here. Apparently, Norwood's gotten a word prompt that he's the guy. He's looking like it on the sideline, so he's leaving. The Bills are definitely going to try to score. Touchdown. Blitz coming, Don. Thomas. So here's a big fourth down now for Buffalo. Oh, what As do you Thurman do? Thomas's carry is just short of the first down. What do you do? Normally it. So here comes the holder and here comes the kicker. I believe he said he's my guy and I'm staying with him. Wow. He can make a lot of things right after a wrong, wrong day. For hard luck, Scott Norwood. The line of scrimmage is at the 24-yard line. He had 15 out of that. Be a 39-yard attempt. It's no problem for him as far as distance. I think the fans are yelling Norwood. Raiders might try to ice him. He's done a great job of that himself. <laughs> And you see they're just short. Well, he can boom it. There's no problem with his distance. Wide right and wide left. This is the game on the line once again for Scott Norwood and the Buffalo Bills. Oak Shell ready to come out there and try to block it himself. Whether well, they're positioning the ball be a 41-yard attempt, and the Raiders call timeout. That won't be the last, I don't think. Los Angeles, their first timeout. This is our vision of what a luxury sedan should be. Not because it offers rich leather and anti-lock brakes, but because it comes standard with an airbag on the driver's side and the passenger side as well. Creating the luxury sedan where even peace of mind is shared. The new 929. The first luxury sedan from the new Mazda. It just feels right. Raiders got the call from the sideline. Big Art. 
shell. Start signaling, call a timeout. Give this guy something to think about if he doesn't have enough already on his mind. Yeah, John Norwood. I, I don't know if maybe they had 10 guys on the field. I'm not sure. But he desperately I wanted that timeout. He, I think he just wanted to have Norwood more time to. Awful st tough spot for the kid, you know. You'd like to have amnesia right now about this day. <laughs> First kick of the day is to win the game in overtime. Forget the rest of them. Listen to the fans. One thing the Bills defense has certainly given the offense chances and the offense has certainly set up game winning chances. Norwood's loose. He's had a lot of chances today, and he's been swinging the leg on the sideline. Frank Wright is the holder, the backup quarterback who's been so successful running the Bills when Jim Kelly's gone down briefly with injuries. Adam Linger is the snapper. Wright's a quarterback. Who knows? I'm pulling for him. Everybody is. You. These 85,000 Raider fans. Here's the kick on the way. It is good. And Scott Norwood gets one last chance and makes it pay. A 42 yard field goal has, despite miss after miss, Marv Levy stays with him for another, another game deciding try. And Norwood finally comes through. As in the second half, Jay Schrader, who played so well in the first half of the Raiders, Schrader was 0 for 4 throwing the ball with two interceptions. That's home field advantage for the Buffalo Bills. They need one more. Excuse me, one more. Yeah, if Houston, Houston, Houston lose, that's right. Norwood with another chance. This one was a little bit to the left, but well inside the upright. Well, that certainly wipes out all the rest of them. That's got to be the play of the game. <laughs> Harvey. <laughs> yes. He goes from Nora Woodent to Great Scott. That's it. Now we're going to take a look at the Cannon camcorder replay of the game. The decider. In overtime. Snap is, set down good as they've been every time. His fourth attempt is finally good, and he knows it immediately. Finally, he says, thank God the thing goes in, it wins the game. So before 85,000, oh. the Buffalo Bills upset the Raiders. The employee owners of Avis salute the game's MVP. Scott Norwood is the winner of the We Try Harder Award. He surely tried hard. Avis, the official car rental company of the NFL. Despite their great record, the Bills came in here as an underdog, and they rise up, come from behind, and win it. We'll be back to the Los Angeles Coliseum in a moment. That was then. This is now. Odor prevention then. Odor prevention now. Introducing the pump deodorant from Old Spice. It beats the leading aerosol deodorant. Actually prevents odor better with a superior formula that's right on target. Unlike that messy cloud. Pump up your odor prevention with the Old Spice pump. This is Hubert Strauss, Austrian downhill racer and Olympic gold medalist. He's not afraid of extreme vertical drops. He's not afraid of speeds over 90 miles an hour. He's not afraid of anything except going slow. But if you think he's tough, wait till you see the guys at the ticket window if you don't have your Visa card. Because once again, the Olympics don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Good. Now I can go to bed. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I want to give you a gift while we're alone. Something just for you. A washer and dryer? <laughs> Come on, me be serious. Okay. Um, close your eyes. Come on. <laughs> Merry Christmas. 
Christmas. This Christmas, give her the gift of love. Diamonds. <laughs> The Buffalo Bills, railing from a 20 to 14 halftime deficit, come out in the fourth quarter to score twice, and then Scott Norwood, hard luck all day, finally hits the big one, a home run, a 42-yard field goal in overtime, and the Bills come back to beat the Raiders. Now for Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey. Glad you could be with us. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. Come fly the friendly skies. Next on NFL Live. No Brown player in history ever exhibited the courage that Ernie Davis displayed during his illness. Nobody. We'll take a look back at the life of Ernie Davis 30 years after he won the Heisman Trophy. It happened. Things like that happened. And uh, the unfortunate thing is, is uh, uh, somebody was hurt. Jets coach Bruce Carver did not have a ball this week with all of the accusations that he coaches dirty football. We'll tell you why. Uh, how good we are, really. Uh, you watch us. You let me know, partner. The most colorful coach in the NFL has his Falcons on a roll. We'll hear more from Jerry Glanville next on NFL Live. Giant Stadium in the New Jersey Meadowlands, where today those pesky New England Patriots who've already beaten the Bills and the Oilers this year try to knock the Jets out of the playoff picture. Hi again, everybody. Bob Costas with Will McDonough and O.J. Simpson. Bill Parcells has the weekend off. He will rejoin us next Saturday. Five of the six playoff spots have been claimed in the AFC. The Jets and Dolphins have the inside track for the final spot. A Dolphin win and a Jet loss clinches it for Miami. A Jet win today means that next Sunday's Jet-Dolphin game at Joe Robbie will be the decider. We start our game reports in the Meadowlands, where the Jets host the Pats, and we join Tom Hammond and Joan Amoth. Tom? Bob, across the Hudson River from your location in Manhattan, it is a cold and a windy day. That wind is, could be significant. It's gusting as high as 30 miles an hour, which would affect the kickers in today's game. And Joe, speaking of kickers, the Jets' Pat Leahy has been hurting all week. Out warming up before the game, and uh, what do you have to say? Well, Pat's had a sciatic problem in his back for the last uh, six weeks or so. He took a half dozen kicks. He hit them solidly. However, Pat's biggest concern is keeping loose, keeping warm. He has an analgesic bomb on his back, and he's going to go to the bench and stay put on that hot seat. Try to stay warm. You know, Bruce Coslett hasn't made a big deal about the playoffs, no impassioned speeches. He said the players know what's needed. How have they responded to that low-key approach? Well, that's what remains to be seen. This is a young team. Only eight guys have made the playoffs before, so they're tense. The question is, can they play with intensity instead of just being tense? All right, that's the story from the Meadowlands, Bob. All right, Tom, glad you got your voice back. The Dolphins play a late game today in San Diego against the 3-11 and Chargers. They'll already know, obviously, the result of the early Jet game. As we said, a Jet loss and a Dolphin win gives Miami a spot in the playoffs. For more on the Dolphins, off to Jack Murphy Stadium and those early arrivals, Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen. Now, wait a second. Before you give the game report, Todd kind of overlooked this week because of all the attention on Kareem's statement that he'd like to come back to the NBA, didn't you earlier this year offer your services to the 49ers when Brett Jones was hurt? Are you still contemplating that? Well, Bob, I'm glad you asked me that. Uh, you know, it really was a difficult decision because NBC's throwing so much money at me. But <laughs> as a result of the fact that Brent Jones, <laughs> as a result of Brent Jones going down with an injury, I called up Lynn Styles. He's a friend of mine. I happened to be working out that week. I caught a few balls. It was like riding a bike. I hadn't forgotten how. I can still run four six on a windy day, and it seemed like a good situation. But in retrospect, I'm so glad to be right where I am. Uh, in retrospect, why did you not accept the job? I, did, I, wasn't, I wasn't offered it. I'm the one that called up. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. What are you talking about? Then they, then they didn't want you. That's yeah. what you're... E evidently, they figured that they want to go with some people younger than 35. <laughs> 35? Gosh, that is young. <laughs> now, the Miami Dolphins, they started out uh, very slowly, and then uh, they had that second-half surge. They won five of their last six ball games. Uh, tough for them to turn it around in the second half? Well, at the risk of being cynical, I, I don't think so. And the reason was, Charlie, is they only played two teams with winning records, and they defeated one of those, that being the Chicago Bears in Soldier Field. And 
I think that's what turned their season around, that and the fact that Marino started throwing touchdown passes. Right, if the Jets do win today, then this game means nothing as far as the playoffs from Miami's standpoint. Don Shula said he might have some interesting decisions during the game. He talked about the fact that he might substitute some people. I don't think that would be a good idea at all. I think that he's got to play to win today. Okay, back to Bob. All right, Charlie. Todd, the Oilers are champs of the AFC Central. At 10-4, and four, they have the same record as the Denver Broncos. But Houston owns the tiebreaker since they beat Denver head-to-head. -head. Now, with only two of the three division winners getting buys, this is a key race to watch. Today, Houston travels to Cleveland. We travel there now for a report from Marvin Paul. All right, Bob, uh, here in Cleveland, it is a 29-degree cold day. The forecast calls for snow later on this afternoon. The conditions not as bad as anticipated. Now, Paul, the Browns made it clear to us they don't mind the, the difficult weather conditions because Warren Moon's run-and-shoot offense has not done well in bad weather. Well, I think one thing Houston has to do today is work on their running game. A couple of weeks ago against Philadelphia, they ran the ball, I think, three times and then quit because they couldn't run against Philadelphia. This enables them, with weather like this, to work on that part of their game. However, back in December of 1988 here in Cleveland in a playoff game in bad weather conditions, Houston played well, beat Cleveland 24-23 in the snow to advance to the second round. Well, snow and rain and sleet and hail doesn't hurt to run and shoot. What really does is if the wind blows across the field, not up and down the field. When that happens, it really throws off the, the passing game. All right, Paul, of most significance, though, how will the bad weather conditions affect your color commentary? Well, the first thing is you you, you got to keep your lips dry at all times, and most importantly, you got to pray to God that your lips don't get chapped. Bob, you're exposed to this for about, what, two minutes per week? I have another three hours to look forward to. <laughs> and we extend our deepest sympathies. You saw Glanville on the sidelines a few years ago as coach of the Oilers. Today, of course, he is in Atlanta, and a very big game for the Falcons indeed against the Seahawks. The Falcons can win the NFC West with a victory this afternoon and either a win next week over Dallas or a New Orleans loss tomorrow night to the Raiders. The weather will be about 44 degrees at game time with winds less severe than those in the Northeast, but gusting occasionally. Now, the Falcons are 10-5 and five at home since Glanville took over. A short while ago, Jerry told me that establishing a home field advantage was his first objective in Atlanta. I think you have to defend your home turf. I think you got to make being at home special. And we've been able to do that. Then the second thing we wanted to do was uh, win division games on the road. And for the first time ever, uh, we swept our division on the road. And uh, all of a sudden, that puts you in place where uh, uh, you take care of business here at home, and we got a shot at getting in the playoffs. What did you do special, if anything, this week to psych up your boys or to make it enjoyable during practice? I know you like to do that. Really, uh, uh, we go to work. You know, we go to work. We work real hard on Wednesday and Thursday, and, and uh, we treat every Wednesday and Thursday the same. And then Friday, we take a physical exam on the field. Uh, we call it an exam. If you make an error, you make a mistake on Friday, you're telling me you don't want to play on Sunday. So that hasn't changed since the day we came in. Uh, we, uh, we're, we're just looking forward to uh, uh, trying to finish this thing out. Everything we, we did so far doesn't matter if we don't close it. Any Elvis sightings or any special information you'd like to pass along before kickoff? Uh, well, we, we're, we're really uh, we're really fortunate. We're going to have Diamond Rio here. We're going to have Travis Tritt here with us. We got Wayne Newton's going to do Elvis Presley trilogy at halftime. So the spirit of Elvis will be in this stadium. This is our last game in this stadium before we move on the dome, unless we can get a playoff game at home. So this is a, a, a little bit of a heart tugger here today for the last time in this stadium. Yes, Wayne Newton with an Elvis trilogy. If they make the playoffs, obviously we expect Lola Falana and Shecky Green. <laughs> On this day after Michigan's Desmond Howard won the Heisman Trophy, we'll take a special look at the man who won it 30 years ago. The unforgettable story of Ernie Davis is next on NFL Live. NFL Live is brought to you by Subaru. It's what to drive. By Head & Shoulders, because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And by Canoe, the men's cologne by Dana. Of the Atlanta Falcons warming up before today's game with Seattle. He is one of seven Heisman Trophy winners currently active in the NFL. Rozier won the award in 1983 after starring at Nebraska. Now, obviously, just about everyone who wins the Heisman Trophy, as Desmond Howard did yesterday, goes on to a career in the NFL. One of the rare exceptions was the great Syracuse running back, Ernie Davis. Gail Gardner has the tragic story of a remarkable man. Song and his hope for the future. In 1961, Ernie Davis became the first black athlete to ever win the Heisman Trophy. And John F. Kennedy recognized him as a true American hero. 
Ernie was looking ahead to a career in pro football and a life with his college sweetheart, Helen Gott. His name was on the lips of every football fan in America. He was so special, you know, and uh, such a great kid. He just effervesced uh, enthusiasm. And uh, he had that wonderful smile. If there ever was a perfect kid, it was Ernie Davis. This kid from Elmira, New York, was on his way to the pros. Signed by the Cleveland Browns, he would join his fellow Orangeman Jim Brown in the backfield. But by the spring of 1962, everything changed. I received a call from a doctor and said that he had uh, devastating news for me, that they've, they've uh, uh, diagnosed Ernie's case not as mumps, but as acute monocytic leukemia, the most virulent kind of leukemia for a youngster. When you found out that he had some kind of an illness, it just, you couldn't believe that. And you also felt that he was gonna overcome it. I mean, nobody in that kind of condition, that healthy looking, can be that sick. As we were walking down the street, a fan came up to Ernie and said, are you Ernie Davis? And Ernie says no, because we were, I guess we were on our way to dinner somewhere else. And he says no, and the fan says, you should be glad that you're not Ernie Davis because he's going to die. And Ernie looked at the fan and said, I am Ernie Davis and I'm not going to die. But all the will in the world couldn't save Ernie Davis. He died on May 18th, 1963. The funeral was a most heartfelt outpouring. For Ernie's mother, who lost her only child, it was the words of a priest that kept her going. He said, um, now you know, if you went into a flower garden to pick flowers, you would pick the prettiest and the best. Well, I said, yes. So he said, well, now that's the way God is. And he comes to get flowers from his garden. He picked the best. So sad, yeah. Sad even. There are perpetual flowers on Ernie Davis's grave. His Heisman opened the floodgates for all the great black athletes that would follow. Each one of them carries a little bit of Ernie Davis's legacy in his heart. O.J. Simpson, Archie Griffin, Tony Dorsett, Earl Campbell, and so many more were witnessed to his courage and integrity. And what better weekend to honor the memory of this extraordinary Heisman winner. Happy birthday, Ernie Davis. We haven't forgotten. Yes, Ernie Davis would have been 52 yesterday, which turned out to be Heisman Trophy Day for 1991. Juicy won the award seven years after he did. He had some meaning for you, right? Yes, you know, I, I first became aware of the Heisman, really what it was all about because of Ernie Davis being the first black recipient of the award. And I recall, even though I never saw him play other than, than in highlights around that time, uh, in the park we were all debating, you know, I'm Jim Brown, I'm Ernie Davis. And the big question was, well, who's going to block? I said, you're, you're, you're Brown, you're block, you're going to block, I'm Ernie Davis, I'm going to run the ball and vice versa. So uh, it was just sad that I never got to see him play in real life. What an amazing backfield that would have been. Yeah, I saw him play at Syracuse, Bob, against Boston College once, but I think a great story about him is uh, Modell told me earlier today that Ernie Davis, when he was sick and he was going to treatments twice a week, would always call Ot Modell on the phone and say, I'm sorry, Mr. Modell, I'm taking your money and I'm not playing. And this went on and on. But suddenly one day Ernie Davis was in his office and his secretary said, Ernie's here, and Modell brought him in and said, Champ, why are you here today? And he says, well, I just want to say goodbye. And three days later he died. And we'll continue right after this. Look who's starting at quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers today against the Bengals. Bobby Brister returns after Neil O'Donnell started the last eight games. Now, a week ago, Will, the Steelers lost 31-6.